Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to haters. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Okay, gang, it's been, uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say it's been a minute. More been a minute. Like, more like 12, 12 days. 12 minutes. minutes 12 right, minutes, since yeah. June 29, last time we did a podcast. Uh, everybody was out. Adam was literally out, but some of us were out and we're back. Uh, and the first podcast, we got a special guest for you. Uh, someone who, if you're on social, you see her talking, making her arguments, and everybody in the market saying, you got to hear what she's got to say. You got to hear what she's got to say. So finally, we had a chance to have her on the podcast, the great Lauren Chin. It's great to have you on the podcast. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, of it's course. It's a surreal experience. Thank you so much for helping us realize that Vinny took uh, <laughs> honors French. Honors we French. didn't know this yeah. Yeah. years ago. Very impressive that you were able to get that out of merci, him. Merci, merci beaucoup. So we're going to talk about a lot of current events topics in a minute. You know, you'll make the introduction of who you are for some of the people that maybe don't know who you are. Guys, we got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, Jamie Dimon gave a speech this last week in an interview that some people said, wow, this guy sounds presidential. If you haven't seen it, we'll play it for you. Even Bill, Ma Bill Ackman, billionaire, said huge loss if Jamie Dimon doesn't run for president. We'll talk about Janet Yellen's um, trip to uh, Beijing, uh, as well as uh, what happened with Trump when he went to UFC and uh, the way uh, he shook hands with Joe Rogan. A lot Ew. of people are saying that podcast... Is possibly coming up very soon. We'll talk about that. Ramaswani closes in on DeSantis as Trump dominates the GOP poll. This is The Hill. 14 promises Trump has made in his campaign for second term CNN. Maria Bartiroma confronts DeSantis in tw on 2024 campaign asking, what happened to your campaign? And his answer and laugh reveals a lot. And then uh, outside of that, Joe Biden, uh, what is the optimal time for Biden to drop out? It doesn't matter what it is, wh whether it's the Hill, whether it's the Atlantic saying step aside Joe Biden. They want him replaced by somebody else. We'll talk about that. This past uh, uh, on 4th of July, I don't know what you guys were doing, but uh, in this one house, I think it's a White House. They found some white stuff <laughs> in the White House, which is kind of appropriate. Weird. You, Weird. You think? It's not a greenhouse. It's a White House, a which white makes house. sense. We're going to find that uh, Vinny maybe has some insight on what happened with uh, Hunter Biden there. And then uh, Zuckerberg and Musk are going back and forth. And I don't know if you saw what uh, Elon Musk tweeted last night, which is kind of crazy. Rob just told us about it. Maybe we'll show Elon Musk tweet last night about him and Zuck. Biden... Uh, says war with Russia must end before NATO can consider membership with Ukraine in an interview with your guy. I know you got some thoughts on that. Fareed. And then we have the movie that came out, Sound of Freedom. Uh, but at the same time, CNN talking heads are now saying that this was uh, the anti-child sex trafficking movie, Sounds of Freedom, is created out of bogus statistics and QAnon concepts. You have to hear this <laughs> person on CNN talking about it. And Rolling Stone comes out trashing this movie while supporting cuties. And at the same time, an article comes out a, a couple months ago talking about Rolling Stone's editor-in-chief spiked reporting on friend getting arrested for child porn. So <laughs> where, where is that's a little bit confusing when you're doing some. Anyways, we got a lot of things to cover here on stories. Uh, but before we get started, Lauren, if you don't mind taking a moment and sharing with the audience your background. Sure. So I'm currently a YouTuber, content creator, uh, Blaze TV host, TPUSA contributor, but I started, gosh, what was that, seven years ago, maybe just posting videos on YouTube just anonymously for fun. Uh, I definitely didn't want my face out there at the time because I wanted to be able to work, um, which I think I've the ship has sailed on me having a job outside of what I do now just because of all the things that I've said over the years. But uh, What was work? So what, what did you do? So I was actually doing um, human resources. HR, where, yeah, really? Yeah, HR, okay. right. What type of, of those, company were you doing HR for? It was for a consulting company. So it wasn't really hiring. It was more like strategic HR, um, human capital type of thing, which I, I still find interesting, but it's obviously very different. Um, and especially... I'm not necessarily politically correct. So when people hear that, they're like, really? HR? It's like not the type you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be the type to write anybody up. But uh, I'm a young woman and I was just kind of feeling like my peers especially were having one very, very uh, specific viewpoint, radical feminism shoved down their throats. And I felt like it just wasn't representative of not only myself, but a lot of 
a lot of people out there. So that's what's kind of interesting that, that you bring that up is that you're saying that you were started doing these videos uh, anonymously. Yes. And you didn't want to be known for this. This is that's actually very indicative of the the tweet you just did a couple days ago yeah. about well, it was yesterday I believe when you were in the Bahamas. Basically saying that people, successful people, people who have made it in their life, don't want to basically put their stuff out there. Uh, explain it, that to me. By the way, would. it's funny you say this. Why, yeah. why do you think people are so scared to, you know, share their opinions? What, what do you think is causing this fear? I mean, I'll give my story of a guy. By the way, you should have met these guys. These are your kind of guys. But why do you think people Conservative are Conservative so Christians, great no, no, guys? They, okay. they were Persian Jews from New York oh, wow. who knew how to party. Wow. I mean, this is your yeah, community. Yeah, my people right yeah. there. Oh, Shout out to Even though you're not guys. Persian. So why, why do you think people are scared nowadays? Well, I mean, it's it's cancel culture, and it's kind of, it's been done to death, the issue. Everyone knows it's real now, but, I mean, years and years ago, people were starting to realize that it was it was a thing. I mean, you have your social ostracized, you can be socially ostracized yeah. if you have the wrong opinion. This is especially true if you are a younger generation. I mean, your peers are being indoctrinated almost nonstop from, I mean, the education system, especially if they're going to a college, media, social media. So I think a lot of people, they're, you know, they're looking at what happens when someone Someone gets labeled a racist or sexist or whatever it is, and they're kind of weighing, is it worth kind of speaking out if it means that I'm going to lose my friend group? And I, I have had friends who are, I guess, no longer friends because of my beliefs. Is it worth being fired or having my job prospects, uh, I guess, limited just to speak out about these issues? And I think a lot of people are saying, mm, no, not not really. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just keep my mouth shut. I'll just kind of go with the flow. But we see where that's gotten us over the past few years. Let me ask you, who were you in high school, like 10th grade, 11th grade? Who, who was Lauren Chen in high school? Um Quiet. I was in the math club, okay. uh, played the flute and violin, so just a uh, happening person. Happening yeah, person. All oh, the cool <laughs> kids. As the kids say. Partier. So, so it's fair to say you were not part of the party animal, getting hammered. Oh, actually, I, I skipped 10th grade also. That, oh, great. That should give you a little bit of an indication of what my social okay. circle was. Got it. Yeah. So were you like a 4.3 GPA type? Painfully of... Asian, yes. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the that, tiger moms out there. That was there. not the first grade I skipped either. Uh, so. Really? <laughs> I also skipped nine. So how old were you when you graduated? Uh, from high school, it's a nine long, years old. <laughs> I, I didn't technically graduate high school because I was going back and forth through Canadian and American systems. But I finished with my bachelor's when I was twenty. So you finished with your bachelor's when you were twenty. Yeah, I, I love. It. I haven't bragged about high school for so long. This That's, is this great. Feel great. It's pretty impressive, man. Yeah. yeah. And you said you said earlier nobody ever even offered you drugs. Like people looked at yeah. Lauren and they were like, nope, she's not yeah. doing she's blow. Gonna say she ain't no. cool enough. She yeah. ain't doing blow. We got there's Doogie no hanging out with Hunter Biden. That's there's, not gonna yeah. happen. No, no, she's definitely okay. not gonna be hanging out. So with there's why I said question from me is the, is the following reason. So normally in school, you know who certain people are and everyone's going to find each other. The party people are going to find each other. The complainers are going to find each other. The gangsters are going to find each other. The bodybuilders are going to find each other. The athletes are going to find each other. The Christians are going to find each other. Everybody finds each other, right? So if, if you were who you were in high school, your friends that all of a sudden are saying, well, Lauren, you know, you're being a little too extreme with the stuff that you're saying seven years ago. Was it a surprise to them that your opinions were what they were? I think so, because if, especially if we're talking about women, women have the tendency to be very agreeable. And I think if when you're taking a position that's going against the mainstream, which if you are at all center, even center left nowadays is considered fringe or extreme, that is an unpopular position that is anti-establishment. And I think a lot of women, especially like the nice girls that I was hanging out with, I never would have thought of them as extreme or radical. But I think because they are so prone to that agreeableness, as Jordan Peterson would say, it's just a lot easier to go with it, to accept it, especially when you have these activists that are painting things like extreme feminism or the LGBT agenda as just being tolerant and accepting. They're going to look at anyone who speaks out against that as extreme, confrontational, uh, bigoted, you name it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy you say that. So we're in Bahamas this last weekend. We took a couple hundred people there. Vinny, one night, we laughed. You made us laugh for three hours straight. I had an ab workout by the time we were done that night. But we walk out of this restaurant, and this one guy comes. He says, you're the Twitter guy. Another guy comes. He says, you're the TikTok guy. I'm like, I'm the TikTok guy. I don't even know. You know, so... But the Twitter guy that I'm talking to, I said, tell me why you're saying I'm the Twitter guy. I said, well, I see your Twitch. He said, you should have me on your podcast. The guy says this to me, good looking, 
you know, Successful. Middle Eastern, Jewish, wearing a $50,000 watch. And he says, you should have me on the podcast because we can, we agree on a lot of things. I'd love to kind of tell them what's really going on. So why don't you have a podcast? He says, oh, no, no, I can't have a podcast. So why can't you have a podcast? He says, well, you know, because, you know, business is going to affect us. I said, you're the problem. Yeah. You're, you're the reason why America's where it's at. You are the absolute problem. And he grabs his wife. Wife comes over. These other two guys come over. Every one of them uh, l- listens to you. So he, they know content, what we're doing, all this stuff. He says, yeah, he is. He's a pussy. You know, he's, he's scared. He's this. He's that. His friend is now joking with him. Oh, right? gotcha. So I sat there and I said, so what are you scared of? Tell me actually what you're scared of. He says, well, what, what do I do? I mean, if I do in New York, I'm in New York. You know, if I say anything, you know, we're going to do this and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. Now, that's exactly the issue, okay? The three communities that I keep talking. I had a great conversation with Dave Smith last week. We a phenomenal call together about the three communities. The lazy and scared Republicans are ruining America. The do-your-thing libertarians are ruining America. And the uh, tolerant Christians are ruining America. These three communities are all generally net positives to society. They contribute to society. They don't take. But they're ruining America because they're sitting there saying, well, I don't want to kind of get my name called that. I'd rather well just be quiet and not say anything about it because what if I... The guy's like, "What? If my real estate business could take a hit. I say, your country could take a hit. Your kids could take a hit. You're worried about the real estate business. But then again, it's a real valid fear that a lot of people are having nowadays. But even a guy asked a question on the tweet. He says, Pat, I'm an executive. I, if you go to uh, go to the other tweet prior to this, because this is a different tweet, go back one. Guy asked a question. Go 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 a little lower. I think it's that one right there. Yeah. Guy asked the question. Go to the bottom on when the guy asked the question. Right there, my response to him. He says, Pat, I saw your thoughts on a podca- podcast and completely agree. However, it is a risk for many of us to speak up. We have bosses who don't agree with us and bills to pay. What do you recommend to com- combat that? I said, I totally understand there's risk for speaking out, but there's risk for staying silent is much bigger. However, there are creative ways for doing it. If you, if you want to click on show more, you can create a pseudo name to write blogs, a fictional character, a burner account that speaks up, a community Twitter account that uh, without revealing it, you kind of like libs of TikTok. There are many ways to push the envelope. The only thing I discourage you from doing is staying silent. So that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And it when I finally did reveal my face and eventually my name, it was almost, it was freeing. Honestly, it was you, it's sort of scary because you know, all right, I can't really work a mainstream job in HR. If people at my wiki page is calling me a white supremacist and uh, you know, all these terrible things, a white supremacist. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> a white supremacy is very multiracial nowadays. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly diverse bunch. Those. those oh yeah. Neo-Nazi. Working out yeah. now, apparently if you work out too much, well, yeah, but you know, you know what you, you actually, Pat left out, uh, Apart, not only were we at a dinner for three and a half hours and we came out, that that interaction with this group, with especially with this guy, was like a 10 to 15 minute situation where he not even called them out. I mean, like an audience. It was like a town hall in the casino. And it was Pat wasn't being quiet. He was going in on him. He was seeing the light. And then his friends were showing up. Other people were showing up, recognizing Pat. And I think calling people out, Pat, was was not only like a good thing. We need more people like that. Who, mind you, he has kids in the room. He has a, enough crap going on where taking that time out in the middle of a casino on vacation to base. I mean, talk, Pat, it was pretty loud. Like, I think we need more of that where it's like, hey, listen, you're not doing your part. You're all freaking talking. It's a talking. valid concern. It's a very it valid is. concern. It is. It's so one we have to understand the level of. Like a guy calls from Hollywood saying, hey, Pat, I fully agree with what you're doing. Obviously, I can't talk about it because if I do my community, I'm going to get hurt. I said, okay, courier-wise. I said, okay. He says, what should I do? I said, do you have a few money if you're in Hollywood? I don't. I said, what matters more to you? Is this a bigger cause in your life than your love for Hollywood? He says, that's something I got to battle with. I said, I totally get it. You got to do what you got to do. But nowadays... The movie, Sound of Freedom, which we'll talk about here in a minute, but I think you want to say something. No, well, I just want to give you kudos, but also kind of give a little, I don't want to say pushback, but there's a different perspective. So I fully agree with what you're saying here about um, creating a pseudonym, or even if you don't feel comfortable putting yourself out there, there are avenues to express yourself, no doubt. I'd say what, one of the things I love about doing this is I get to talk my shit, right mm-hmm. or wrong, I get to learn, I get to grow. I get to express myself. That's the beauty of doing podcasts. What's interesting, though, is I did a Manect call. Uh, shout out to the team at Manect. Everything's going awesome there. I mean, I, the, the guys I'm speaking with. Congrats on 300 Manects, by the way. Thank you. It's great. It's You're awesome. Manecting. 
connect with us on Manect. Yep. PBD, Vincent, myself, we'll sign you up, Lauren. But I have a call with this guy in Manect. And the whole conversation was he was like, my business has taken a 50% drop because I express myself too much. Hmm. I'd like to discuss with, this is the question. I'd like to discuss with you on Manect what you think I should do. I said, all right. We get on a call. It's a half hour call. I'm not going to put his name or anything out there. I said, so tell me about your business. Well, I'm in San Francisco. I'm in the medical field. And I work with a lot of high profile people. I mean, he said some names. When I say high profile, I mean very high profile. Like, you'll know the names. And he goes, you know, I'm a, a right, center right guy. I'm a MAGA guy. I'm a Trump guy, whatever. And he goes, I... In the medical field, I'm making a half a million dollars easily. And in the last year, my business has taken a 50% hit. He's like, now I'm making a quarter million dollars a year just because the people that I surround myself with caught wind of my political beliefs. And they've like, one, two, three, the names went out there. It's a valid question. And I said, and I was like, wow, let me process this with yeah. you. And I said, let me ask you something, bro. Do you have any political aspirations? No. Do you have any interest in doing a podcast or anything like that? Zero. I go, then why are you pushing the envelope so much? Because it's costing you a quarter million dollars a year. He goes, that's exactly what I'm grappling with right now. I want to say what's on my mind, but it's literally costing me hundreds of thousands of dollars. I go, but hold on, back up a second. Where do you live? San Francisco. <laughs> that's the problem. Like, yeah. I'm that's like, the problem. Are, are you planning on moving your business at all? No. Like, this is where I'm at. I go, then, I don't know what you want me to tell you, bro, but is voicing your opinion worth a quarter million dollars a year? Only you can answer that. He goes, yeah, not not really. But I'm glad, this is circling back, I'm glad that you brought up alternative options that people can do. Yes, it's sad that if you express your thoughts and your beliefs, you could literally get canceled or lose clients or lose jobs or lose money. But that's the risk that we're at these days. But I, is it sad, though? Because that's where I'm at. I mean, obviously, I'm speaking from a position of privilege where I get to, like you said, speak my mind and I have mm -hmm. people who support me. But if you're in this position, do you want clients who would otherwise hate your guts if they knew what you actually believe? Do you want to work for someone who thinks that you're this terrible person who's destroying the country? Do you want friends who are only your friends because they actually agree with you? Because there are rich clients this guy could have in Nashville, in, mm -hmm. in Florida. He doesn't have to be there. And likewise, if you are someone who's wanting to do something to contribute to, uh, I don't know, a little bit of the normalization of politically uncomfortable ideas we should all be investing and spending money with people who share our values we should stop supporting financially people who hate us or who are trying to trans our kids like with target or bud light because i think what we're finding increasingly is that for the longest time things have only gone one way it's only people who are against the left that are afraid to speak out the left doesn't have that same shame you have celebrities who will tweet the most radically left-wing things imaginable they're still in movies they're still in disney and marvel whatever but i mean someone like gina Toronto says something that could potentially be a little bit critical of, I think it was COVID stuff. She's fired immediately. Is that fair? No, that's not fair. So we need to start, I mean, in enforcing the fact that we have our own values. We're not going to be ashamed of them. We're going to support people with like minds. If that means moving, maybe that that's what you have to do. So many people are doing that now because I, I think a lot of people are just tired of being afraid all the time. It's a, by the way, it's a very valid conversation. A lot of people are having it. That's great feedback, but, uh, you know, it, it, there's there's a couple things to be thinking about. <laughs> so one is like, okay, so if I'm work, if I'm living in San Francisco and I want to stay there, like this guy wants for to stay there, reason, yeah, for some reason, I might ask. Well, that's reason. where like, his business is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, but but the if feces you, in the street, it's quaint. Yeah, it's very <laughs> quaint. It's very romantic it's amazing. when you're going out yeah. with your wife and oh, babe, I stepped in a what a beautiful oh, thing, babe. Just the smell on the car. I guess to be clear, he's in Silicon Valley, which is what so, a half yeah. hour outside Silicon, of Silicon yeah. Silicon Silicon Valley. I got you. So so you know. So, so, to, so to go through this, he's yeah. right. It is a deeply concerning thing. But by the way, that doesn't mean that's not the reason why America is in shambles today. That also doesn't mean that. It means guys like him who are afraid to address conversations like this are the reason why the other side is able to get so much agenda. So the, the whole concept is what are we intolerant towards? Again, I pray for four things, courage, wisdom, tolerance, understanding. I'm having a hard time with the third one, right? Because it's being tolerant, be tolerant, be tolerant. Yeah. I have a hard time with tolerance right now. 
And then you see uh, Dave Smith uh, tells me about a quote by uh, uh, Von Mises. He says, uh, can you pull up the, the tweet that I, now just the tweet right there that you had. Go back to it and go all the way to the top of the tweet. Not that one, the other one. Go all the way to the top of the tweet. Oh, yeah, right there. If you can, uh, there's a quote right there that says, uh, right there. Classic liberalism must be intolerant of every sort of intolerance. I, I, have to, I have to tell you, I've been grappling with many different words in my life, you know. Why are we lazy? Well, I finally realized why people are lazy. Your life is boring. When we're bored, we are lazy. So you don't want to have a boring life. Make your life exciting by constantly having stuff to do. So these things you ask questions of, right? This one here, you have to be tolerant. Christians, we got to be tolerant. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. You can't be tolerant towards intolerance. If you're going to be intolerant to me, who the hell are you to think I'm going to sit there and take it from you? So, so the, the concept of intolerance, we must be intolerant to intolerance. Even uh, for some of the Christian community on the bottom where it says your eyes are too pure to look on evil, you cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent with the wicked swallow up the more righteous than themselves? The whole thing he's talking about is why are you letting these wicked people take advantage of weak people? Mm -hmm. I'm standing in the streets. I see a person being bullied. I can't do something about it. No, no, no. I don't want to ruin my career because what if I save that lady and then the cop comes and arrests me? So let him beat, her, beat the wife up. It's okay. I'm just going to mind my own business. That's a coward in, in a way, yeah. right? Well, I, I don't think tolerance is a virtue at all actually it is certainly not a christian virtue if you look at the new testament you, you don't really see christ saying it's okay i'm just going to accept this no he speaks his mind he makes a very clear delineation between right and wrong god of the old testament certainly not one for tolerance so the idea that this is a virtue something we should strive toward i i disagree and it's the same thing with blanket concepts like diversity we're supposed to believe tolerance is inherently good diversity is inherently good just because but no they, they've provided no moral framework as to why those things should be something we strive for we're supposed to just accept it without question yeah I, no i agree with that well she, she nailed uh, yeah. the pet because think about it the left the other side does not give a damn. They're not. They They're don't not give, and, no, and nothing happens to no. them. So Pat and I'm, I'm, and I've always said this. It's time for us to be like, you know what? Enough is enough. Open your mouth. If you have to punch people in the face, I mean, they're doing it. What are we? Just, what we're supposed to just sit back and just and I, take it? I have one thing to say about that. So here's here's a part. Is it fair to say there's certain people in America that they're going to vote Democrat even if your argument makes sense? They're yes. never going to change 100%. Yes. Is, is it fair to say there's certain people in America they're going to vote Republican no matter what? You can't say anything to them? 100%. Yes. Okay, so the, the, the truth is right for both sides. Okay. So who are we really trying to talk to? That becomes a question. The independents. Mm -hmm. if, if you're trying to talk to the undecided, the independent, li the libertarian, the green, whatever the community that's in the middle, the 12%, you have to figure out a way how to communicate with them. So if this guy's talking about this, I know a lot of people that will come and say, well, let me tell you something. Fuck this. And you know, scare me. Yeah, you're not converting anybody. Mm -hmm. you, the ability to communicate a message as well to somebody saying, I never thought about it, thought, of, thought about that before. You can do it simply by questioning. You can do it simply by saying, you know what, John? I don't know if public school was like this. They, they, when you and I went to public, was it like this before? I just don't remember being like this. The other day, my kid went to school and they did this. What do you think about it? That is a very open, you know, you're not bashing anybody to start a conversation. And the other person can say, yeah, you know what? My wife was saying the same thing. The same thing happened with us the other day. You know, kids going to school. And I thought I was kind of weird. I'm a Democrat. I'm like, why do I do that? It's, it's a little bit concerning. I'm starting to hear this. And those are the ways. Hey, don't you think it's kind of weird? Like, look, I don't mind taking a vaccine. I've taken a ton of vaccines. But don't you think it's a little bit weird that, you know, they want pro-choice to do whatever I want to do with my body, which fine, that's an interesting argument. I get that I'm, as a person that wants to do whatever they want to do with their body. But isn't it kind of weird that they want to be pro-choice there, but they want to be pro-force when it comes down to the vaccine? It's a little weird, ain't it? It's a way you open up the conversation at workplace instead of just saying, these morons, these motherfuckers, blah, blah, blah. That's, also, that's also not going to work. So a part of your friend that you spoke to on Manect uh, could also be the delivery of the message. The delivery of the message is just as important um, if not even more important than the point you're trying to make. You may be right, but your delivery is so bad that you push the person away from whatever argument you were trying to make to them. There's a lot of people on social media, and I'll push back on your uh, what you just said a, a little bit on one of the points. It's easy for us to just go hang out with each other where we agree with each other. It's very safe to do that. You ain't doing nothing special. You're not doing what these great leaders did in the past. 
We're just sitting there talking to each other, and we all agree, hey, let's just go talk to people. Hey, Pat, why don't you come on this platform? Everybody agrees with you. I don't want to go to a platform where everybody agrees with me. I want to go on a platform where people don't agree with me. I want people to stop me in the middle of the street and say, you know what? I don't agree with what you said about this. This, I said, really, I don't agree with myself also sometimes. Tell me what it was about that that upset you, and let's process it together. I think you, we, we have to almost have some of those tough conversations, do something with it, try to figure out a way to persuade. Then if we don't succeed, then we got to take a different route. But I do think we have to talk to the opposition side instead of just people that agree with us. You can be a very good person that can find your own audience. There's two types of people. There's those who are going to go give such a great message, bashing the other side so much that the people that agree with this person show up, but they don't convert. Then there's another person that's going to say, let me tell you my way of how I see this here. And this is how I evolved into thinking this way. And then the other people say, that guy just converted me into thinking like that. So this guy finds a community. This guy goes and converts people. We need more converters in America. That's what's lacking. Mm -hmm. There are too many cowards that are running away just to talk to people that agree with them, and it's safe. We need more fighters. That's the challenge that we're having right now. So when when that guy's saying what he's saying, uh, I don't blame him for feeling that way. Maybe he's got to take a couple communication courses. <laughs> well, I I fully agree with what you're yeah. saying, and that the term that we've all heard over the last handful of years is people are living in echo chambers. Mm-hmm. It's if you're on the left, you're just speaking to all your friends on the left, and that's who you associate with, and you're living your echo chamber. If you're on the right, you don't even all the libtards out there. I would never hang out with anyone on the left. All, all they're fucking evil out there. They're just living in an echo chamber. What I fully appreciate is open dialogue, and I the, the fact that you constantly say. I'm going to push back a little bit. I'm going to push back. But that pushback right there is where you find answers. Although I will. That right there is where you find actually common ground. I mean, speaking of pushback a little bit, uh, Jonathan Hyde, he did this really interesting study, the idea of echo chambers. Conservatives consistently are better able to identify what the left believes than vice versa. Right. Because it's frankly a little bit hard to live in an echo chamber if you are right wing nowadays right your your government is left wing your media is left wing your entertainment is left wing your schooling is left wing so i mean obviously especially if you're in social media and your friend group that could absolutely be just full of conservatives right wingers you don't have any exposure to actual leftists but you're not going to get the same amount of ideological purity that you can on the left. And I think that is why the left more so than the right has been radicalized and that we can see this when we look at uh, like the positioning of the Democratic Party over the, the past few decades yeah. that has shifted much further right compared to, sorry, much further left compared to any transformation that's happened. No, I actually right. fully agree with you. It, can I circle back to one thing? Because we kind of skipped over it. Y- you, we kind of just addressed it and then we moved on. This whole concept of tolerance. PBD, for years... You've been saying that your family abides by four overriding principles. What are they again? Courage, wisdom, tolerance, understanding. Okay, courage, wisdom, tolerance, understanding. This isn't something you just came up with this week, this month, this year. How many years have you been saying that? 15 years. Okay, and you have a whole artwork braced on this. Yes. And I fully understand why you're saying that you're grappling with this word tolerance because it's come up so much these days. Hey, you got to be tolerant. You got to be tolerant. Whereas when you initiated this entire... Uh, livelihood, tolerance was a virtue. Mm -hmm. Tolerance was a main... What's the definition of tolerance? Willingness Mm -hmm. to accept feelings, habits, or beliefs that are different from your own, right? Are there some synonyms? Endurance, resilience, being open-minded. But it comes to an extent. We had When we did the interview with Tate in Romania, when he basically went on a riff about tolerance. Tolerance of what? All right, okay, I'll be tolerance of this. Okay, gays can get married. All right, I'm tolerant of this. All right, I'm tolerant of that. And then he he kind of used the story about all right, now I got to eat the bugs now. I got to be tolerant of eating the bugs. Where do we draw the line? And I think that's where at an inflection point of like, all right, cool. I'm tolerant about this. All right, cool. I'm tolerant about this. Yeah, I don't know about these drag shows with kids. I, I think not tolerant about I, that. I still, I still think it's a good quality. I don't think it's a bad quality. I think you have to uh, isolate in what areas tolerance is bad. We can be easy to jump to one side or the other. I got four kids. Mm-hmm. Trust me, you need tolerance. I run a business with 45,000 insurance agents in you know 49 states. Trust me, you need tolerance when you're working with people that are going through the evolution of growing their mindset and all this other stuff. If you don't have it, if you don't have tolerance, you would fire 100% of people you hire. Yeah. You need a level of tolerance. What I believe mm-hmm. we need a level of intolerance towards is towards intolerance, meaning the people I have the easiest time working with 
or community. Like, for, for example, Chris Cuomo and I were talking yesterday. And he says, Pat, why do you want me on your show? Like, dude. I'm not, I don't look like the profile of people to have you on. Said, Just what? to be clear, you're talking about the CNN anchor, yeah, yeah. former Chris yeah. Cuomo. Cuomo. Yeah. Chris Cuomo. And I said, I said what, what do you mean? I said, it's a very simple question for me. I said, first of all, I have a lot of respect for any man who raises two boys who love each other and are friends and are laughing. And your father did that. And when I see you and Andrew, I got two boys. I want my boys to be, it doesn't, it, I don't have to only look at conservative two sons to see how close they are. It doesn't matter what it is. I respect the fact that you guys are tied. You guys are close. I see you as a stud. Obviously, we have opposing political ideas and philosophies, but that's where we can have the exchange. I think you are respectful and we can have a respectful conversation together. If people can reason, we can have exchange. The people you shouldn't waste your time talking to are the people who don't have the ability to reason. That's when you're wasting your time. This is why I said the people that can be converted or are open, let's talk. The people that are not going to listen to any, like Keith Oberman, what is the conversation with Keith Oberman oh, going to be? Not there's not, there's not going to be a conversation. Yeah. It's just going to be, you're a moron, you're a this, you're a okay, Got it, go home, buddy. It's not going to yeah. work out. This is not what this is all about. So that's all I'm talking about with tolerance and intolerance. But go ahead. I, if I could offer perhaps the virtue you're seeing intolerance there in tolerance, not in intolerance there, uh, isn't actually tolerance itself, but understanding. Because I feel like if you can understand where someone is coming from, well, that should be the defining characteristic of whether you accept them or not. The issue of employees, for example, is it really that you have to be tolerant or that you need to be understanding of different scenarios? And if a scenario still equals them being a, an effective employee, you're not going to tolerate that. No, you that have to. Sense. No, you no, no, no. <laughs> you have to in sales. You if you if, if you think I woke up day one and I was the number one salesperson in my gym or office or insurance company, I, that would be the biggest lie. Somebody was very tolerant with my evolution of improving because they believed in me. That's a different kind of tolerance. I tolerate Vinny when we first had him on the podcast. No joke. Yeah. Uh, and you and I had a conversation with it. And I said, Vinny, here's what we got to work on in this. And even with Adam, I, Adam and I at the first podcast – Versus today, it's a very different thing. But I said, but okay. But is that because you understood that they were new, that they were trying to grow, and that this was not their final evolution? No, I think tolerance is a very good quality. People, people who are tolerant to areas where they believe something can improve, in areas that I'm not going to be tolerant in, my non-negotiables, we're not, we're not, I'm not tolerating my non-negotiables. But I think if you have, let's say you're dating somebody. What is the challenge the older you get, the harder it is to get married? Is there truth to that? Of course there is. Why? Why is it easier to get married when you're in your 20s? Why is it easier to get married when you're in your 30s than 40s? Why? I mean, because there's a whole red pill conversation you're, we could uh, well, go Now you're well, stepping well, in my well, department. Well, well, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but, but by the way, I mean, the argument can be, well, you shouldn't get married because of divorce. They take half of what you got in this America. is all about the women. I get that. What I'm trying to tell you is the older you get, the less things you are willing to tolerate. Yeah, you're which a little by, more set in your way. Which, by sure. the way, some could say that's a good thing, but if you're alone by yourself, but you want to be in a family and have kids, guess what? You are a little bit too all intolerant to too many things. You got to kind of pick what your non-negotiables are. It's the only thing I'm talking about. I want to go to some uh, of the other I, I want to give you credit for one thing. Go for it. Okay, this is it. The reason that I respect PBD so much is the conversation we talked about one of our first handful of podcasts. And it, it came down to the concept of being a leader and specifically being a sales leader. All right, you do the SLS, the Sales Leader Symposium, Sales Leader Summit every year. And, you, and, and I, we were having a conversation, it was a debate, and you go, hold on, I'm sorry, Adam. What's the most amount of people you've ever led? I was like, well, you know, maybe like my sales team is like four or five guys, and I was a camp counselor as a kid, and I was 50 people. You're like, nice try, buddy. Try being the sales leader, sales manager for tens of thousands of people. And that put my whole narrative in perspective. And that's what I give PBD so much credit for. Speaking of tolerance is, I mean, we've been to the MGM Grand, mm -hmm. uh, the events that you do for PHP. Shout out to those guys. Thousands, 10,000 people in a room. When you're leading thousands and thousands and thousands of people, I'm more prone to, to listening to what you have to say versus someone who's yeah. leading Ten people. And, and, and by the way, again, if if you and I wanted to be intolerant to every, say you're a governor, say you're a president, 
Say you're a leader of a military. Oh, my God. One, you're miserable if you have a long list of things to be intolerant to. It's just things are not going to get done, and everybody else is going to be walking on eggshells all the time. So let, let's go into some stories. Let's go into some stories. By the way, Jonah Hill's text. Did you guys see Jonah Hill's yes. text? Did yes. Did you see Jonah Hill's text? Yes, I did. Do you want to go there? Yeah. Okay, sure. I, 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 bring up Jonah Hill's text. Okay. This, this time you said Shocked red pill. Going here. The only reason I went there is because she said red pill. No, I, I want your thoughts. So if you want to pull up Jonah Hill's text, and uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, Adam, you didn't even know I was going to bring this up. No, she not said, at all. Said, Let me bring it up. So here's Jonah Hill's ex sharing, pu- sharing text that they had together publicly, which is obviously a very uh, noble thing to do. And many guys, of course, want to date her after she shares yeah, right. texts of her ex with everybody. Here's a text that Jonah sent to her, plain and simple. If you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendship with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful, I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it, and there will be no hard feelings. There are my, these are my boundaries for romantic partnership, my boundaries with you based on the ways these actions have hurt our trust. When you read this, what do you say? I could not imagine a more reasonable sentiment from a boyfriend. <laughs> not only that, but he communicated very, very clearly and very sensitively, I felt. He's essentially saying, this is what I expect in a relationship. You are currently not meeting those standards. If you want to keep going on the way you're going, that's totally fine. People have accused him of being controlling. He is not telling her what to do. He is simply saying, I will not be a part of it. And guess what, women? We are not entitled to have a boyfriend to have a certain man's time. He is just setting, I thought, very reasonable boundaries. I know in this social media age, it's for some reason controversial to say, hey, you probably shouldn't be posting thirst traps. I would say that, period, but especially if you're in a relationship. So to see people calling Jonah Hill abusive for this, I was really surprised. I was expecting something really juicy, outrageous when I opened the text, and then it's just... Okay. Okay. (laughs) Lauren, you hit the nail on the head here is that you're expecting something so much worse than this. And I was excited for it. I wanted it. You're like, all right, Jonah's a woman beater. Let's find it. Yeah. And even if you look on page six of New York Post, he's been labeled a misogynist. Oh, God. Abusive, actually. Yeah, abusive. Well, uh, emotional abuse is what it's called. Here's the actual deal. Uh, you, you you hit the nail on the head when you said boundaries. Mm -hmm. And also another word for boundaries is preferences. And this is the difference between men and women today. Women have no problem and they are not lambasted or been or been made made fun of or ashamed for when they say that they have preferences. Well, what are the preferences all women want? I want a man that's six foot, makes six figures, I want him to be nice with my mother, I want him to be have puppies, I want him to treat me right, I want him to pay on the first date, I want him to treat you know, be fun, be outgoing, have a good network. There's a checklist that women want. But when guys are like, yeah, uh, here's my checklist. Uh, don't be a hoe. <laughs> Put your tits away. Uh, yeah. You know, don't have do thirst traps all over the internet. I'd prefer it, preferences, if you don't have a bunch of guy friends that you're hanging out with, uh, and actually just be a respectful person and don't put your shit out there. Oh my God, he's an emotionally abusive person. He's a misogynist. So oh, what such They've bullshit. Controlling. I have yes. a question though. Was she was she like this before this happened, or all of a sudden she well, started here's dating? A, here's Pat? the other part of the text. That's interesting because oh, yeah. he says twenty five. Okay, says, You're right. We can't do surf social things or develop trust until you consider me and make decisions that give regard to our relationship. I have been vulnerable as possible as, a, and I am telling you. I am needing you to step up to the plate, which you can. I'm sure of it, but these losers don't get your time if you want me. Straight up. Mm -hmm. It's consideration. I respect your love for surfing, but I respect myself as well. And your love of surfing and being in those situations and lack of awareness are not mutually exclusive. This, By the way, the guy, what a very well-spoken guy. Yeah, he this, seems very emotionally he yeah. intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. He's an editor in chief. I don't this think he's like, acting this is actually here. I think this is him. Uh, yeah. This, yeah. this isn't me. I have my own issues that I own. I gotta love that. If you want marriage and family, you can't use the 25 card. Step up and cut shit. These people don't get your time. Mm-hmm. Or your kindness at the sacrifice of mine. This guy's he's, yeah. he's I mean that seems very emotionally <laughs> yeah. intelligent. I love he's Jonah. communicating I, very clearly. Yeah. By the way, you do you know this is not recent. 
Do you know that he just had a baby with another woman? Yeah, well, I, a month in my, ago. In my yeah. opinion, yes. that is somewhat of the reason behind the leak. Correct. Text. Exactly. So uh, apparently, she waited. This woman right here, uh, Sarah Brady, waited until the new mother of his child, his first child. Is that the ex? That's. That I believe that's, so. That's yes. the ex. Well, she some, some people from from the LGBTQ community could say that Jonah's shown too much cleavage. Uh, that's that's true. way too much. It looks great. There, is that a pirate ship? But on she, chest? the point is, she waited until the new baby mama had a child, out of respect to the woman. Now you might say, what? why the fuck are you even putting these texts out there? Yeah. A year later, right to expose Jonah Hill. I, in my opinion, she's only exposing herself because if she actually made some of these concessions, she could be Jonah Hill's baby mama, wife, whatever. <laughs> but he found someone that actually was willing to work within his framework and his boundaries, where she's out there just still surfing and being by herself. And this is essentially the problem with modern day women is they're not even willing to listen to a good guy's requests. By the, by the way, what Jonah is sharing with her are his non-negotiables. That's all yes, it is. Correct. Hey, these are my non-negotiables. If you're cool with it, I'd love to make you my wife. Let's have family together. Let's have kids together. But I'm not compromising here. That's a perfect example of somebody that can reason, talk, deliver his message, but at the same time not compromise his non-negotiables. you got to respect but him for it. The problem is that he's not supposed to have non-negotiables. He's not supposed to have boundaries when it comes to the behavior of his girlfriend because feminism, she should be able to do whatever she wants. Whatever she wants, Whatever Lauren. she wants. Yeah. He can't have any else. standards whatsoever. No, Take no. it or leave it, buddy. And I think regarding your question of was she doing this before, there are people who were saying, well, if she was posting these photos before they got into a relationship, he should have known what he was in for. I think there's that. that's a good point. I mean, men, you know, if, if, if you're at, at a club... I've been to one once. It was not an enjoyable experience for me. But, you know, if, if you're looking at one a girl, club in your life, it was not good. I did not have a good. But you're time. saying you've only been to one club in your entire life. Yeah. And it was for All a work right. event. It was weird. All anyway, right. you need to get out uh, more there. <laughs> I'm comfortable with the amount I, I get out. Um, How, are you 30 yet? No, not yet. OK, gotcha. You're you're still young. Um, But th thank you. There, a lot of people online disagree. But if what? you're if you, well, because it's like I'm past 25. That's like. You know. Oh, your SMV is down exactly. the hill, young lady. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but if, if you're a guy and you're looking at a girl at a club and she's dressed provocatively and you like the way she looks, that's fine. You can be attracted for to her. But don't be surprised when she's not wife material. Because I think for a lot of men, what they're not understanding, and for a lot of women too, is that there's a difference between being interested in someone physically and maybe for a hookup versus an actual long-term relationship. So maybe Jonah Hill wasn't thinking with his with the right part of his body there when he got into a relationship for with her. But also, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect someone to act differently in a relationship than out of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think that's crazy. Well, people don't change. I actually had a conversation with a good buddy of mine who's a full-on Orthodox rabbi living in Jerusalem when I was there in Israel. Seven kids. And I'm like, what's up, dude? He's like, dude, I'm the same guy. <laughs> He's like, now I've, I've changed like 10%. I mean, this was a surfer dude, wild party guy, Miami, who had a, an, a situation in his life where he needed to make a change. He goes, but I don't, I'm still the same person. So maybe you change 5%, 10%, a little bit. People don't do complete 180. So if he's- Especially what, not overnight. For sure. Yeah. Um, arguably ever major, major life changes. So the point is, if he, she's this surfer girl that's already doing this, maybe she'll change a little bit. She's not going to completely- to a 180 on her complete lifestyle. Just like if I'm like, hey, do you want to go out to a club, Lauren? It's like, maybe you'll go once, <laughs> but you're not going to go turn into like a party yeah. rat. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. You think people change exponentially? No, no. What do you, w w w listen, yes, dramatic. Dude, I changed not 10%, bro. You, 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 me at 19 years old versus me at 26 years old. It's not. It's not a little bit of change. It's it's night and day what my what my habits had to do. Okay. It, it all depends on what life you're so. If you're sick of the life that you got and you want to move on, which Jonah's going and getting therapy and sitting down with people, figuring out a way to how to live his life. He's being in Hollywood. You probably partied with so many people. God knows what rooms you've been in with what types of people, with how many women, with what has any experience. So what happens at one point? Like, dude, I don't want this life. I actually want to have a family. I actually want to have somebody. You can't change 5%, 10%. You have to change dramatically. 
And that pain is not easy. So if she doesn't want to give up some of the stuff that she wants, she doesn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. I remember dating a girl, loved her. Till today, we're very good together. Jennifer's friends with her as well. But I, asked, I got to a point with her where I said, listen, man, I don't know what we're doing next. Okay, you want to go do Hollywood? I don't want to do Hollywood. I want to go be a businessman. And But, man, we like each other's company. Everything's good. Here's what I want to do. What's that? I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. Let's go to church together. What? Are you becoming religious? No. All I'm saying is if we're going to take the next step of getting married, I kind of need help. I don't have a manual. And we got to go belong to some kind of a church, something to learn. So that month of me going through that process for her was so dramatic that she didn't want to do it. And for me, I didn't want to live the life that I was living. I made a massive mm -hmm. shift in my life, which, by the way, when you do make a massive shift in your life, like for her, she's been the same for a long time from the standpoint of values. When she was the way she was in high school, she's the same as she is today. When she says she hasn't done drugs, she's been to one club and because of work and all this other stuff, that's probably your entire life for 29 years. That's not the case with me. I woke up and I said, I'm done. The day I woke up and I said I was done, I probably, if I give you a number, I probably lost 20 people in my life mm -hmm. overnight. 20 people. My going to Dublin's crew, my going to Garden of Eden crew, my going to Pimps and Hoes crew in Las Vegas, my crew of going to, you know, these, every one of those Saddle Ranch crew, my, you know, pool, Charles Billiards, every one of those I lost. The girls, I lost all of them. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, what are you doing? What happened to you all of a sudden? So some, you know, they're in an upbringing, stable, things are more solid, all this stuff. Some are not. If you do want a dramatic change, like let's just yeah. say you want to have a wife and kid, if you truly, like what Vinny's doing right now, I'll give you an idea. Vinny, um, all of a sudden I'm at church. I'm like, I see Vinny. I'm like, well, what, what's Vinny doing there? Okay, that's kind of crazy. And then Vinny gets baptized. This is like six weeks. I'm like, well, what is Vinny doing over there? And I go record it from the sound. I'm like, this is the same Vinny? Yeah. Just, what you think? You're telling me a story about a girl, you know what I'm saying, with your lips getting swollen all this. Well, and, and he's not doing this. And he's not doing that. And then we go, we take him to Bahamas. And I'm like, damn. Vinny's not changed in the last six weeks after the Tate visit or whatever. We're on the flight back. He makes a massive decision. Mario's invited him to church. Aaron invited him, all this stuff. Vinny's made a dramatic shift in his lifestyle. Guess what? The people he was kicking it with eight weeks ago probably don't like him right now. Nope. Mm -hmm. The people he was chilling with, girls are like, hey, can I come over at 11 o'clock? Nah, girl, you can't right now. Yep. What happened to you? What happened to the old fun Vinny? That's the bullshit you're going to hear. So there's different situations that people have. For some that we live the wildlife and we want to make a big change, you have to be ready, like Jonah is, to be able to say, I lost this girl. It's totally fine. You got to make that decision as a man. It's tough to do, so it's not easy. Trust me. But your friend that's 10% changed since seven years old, that's fine. That's not the case with everybody. I, I will, I'll say this. When you say it's not the case with everybody, I'll, I'll make, make the case that it's not the case with barely anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what you're saying is an anomaly, PBD. How many guys that are gang bang in LA or whatever are like, yep, I made a complete change in my lifestyle. I'm a complete family man now. I've started a business. I'm sorry, you're an anomaly. And and respect to you for that. So most people are not making dramatic so, changes. I don't think so. I, I'll give you an example. I don't if think Vinny's so. If Vinny's going to church now, yeah. awesome. Mazel tov. Right. Amazing. I I have I have not noticed any difference in Vinny. And and respect I mean, it's still the same guy. It's he might so here's my point. Your habits might change. Your lifestyle might I don't change. Say personality. You're just exactly. That's personality my point. It doesn't change. That's, That's my point. No, it's not the it, point. Your decisions may change, but your yeah. personality's not changing. No, 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 no. no That's my point. You can't change your personality. Exactly. Yeah, you can't change your personality, but you can change who you are. You can change your decisions okay, he, and your here's habits. Here's the question, yeah. though: Is being a whole personality or a lifestyle? Oh, well, say this again. Is being a whole personality or a lifestyle? Oh, it's a lifestyle, girl. Is I also think it's part personality because there are girls that I went to school with in high school and, you know, they weren't at the time doing anything, I don't think. And then, oh, you're pregnant two years later out of wedlock. That was not a shock to me, even though the lifestyle yeah. they were living at the time wasn't that. But just based on their personalities, I knew that was going to happen. Like, 19, I knew there was going to be trouble. In 1973, Gallup did a poll, OK, asking what percentage of gays in America were born that way, and what percentage of gays in America were gay because of their environment? What do you think the percentage was in Gallup when they said what percentage mm -hmm. of uh, gays were gay because of the they were born that way? Gallup, this is like 70s. I would say at that time most of them would have said, or most people would say it was because they were 
Wait, are they asking environment or born? Are so they this is a nature versus nurture or? question. No, they're asking the the American people in America to because they, they, this. They would say nurture. Okay, so nurture. Okay, on, before you give the results, yeah. can we all guess on this? Yeah, I want you to guess. Okay, it. go ahead. So, just, if you would, just rephrase it one more time. Okay, so back in nineteen late seventies, yeah. they did a poll in America asking people, people who are gay. Yes. Do you think they were born that way? They were born gay or because of their environment? People in the 70s would have said that it was because of their environment. Okay. Yeah. What do you say it is? Is it a percentage you're yeah. saying? Yeah. I would say uh, born 40%, 60% environment. Okay. Check this I'd out. Say 30, I'd, I'd say 30. 13% said they were born that way. Mm -hmm. Today it's wow. 49%. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. During gotcha. that time when they said 13% born that way, 50 something percent said was because of their environment. So, to go back to your question about a hoe, most hoes, uh, their <laughs> environments affect them a lot. Who you party with, you have to pick up hoe tendencies. There was a famous poet named Ludacris that yes. said it. <laughs> right? Why do you think and you take a hoe to a hotel? He's a great poet. Pat. He's a great poet. A lot of different area yeah, codes, no. right? <laughs> And see, Pat can, don't change. See, still quote Ludacris. Still in there. Yeah, but that, it's pre 2004, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the point is, Environment has a big impact. Upbringing has a big impact. People you befriend has a big impact. And a part of it is your own attractiveness to that, mm -hmm. which is part of your DNA. But I'm not going to say it's that big of a percentage. You you become a hoe. You're not born a hoe. Kit doesn't born. <laughs> go ahead. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is how I'm going to be my entire life. Yeah. No, you pick yeah. up some of those bad habits. So to go back, some of us may have not had hoe tendencies. Some of us may have had lazy tendencies. Some of us may have had you know, splurging tendencies. Some of them may have had, you know, smoking wheat tendencies or cocaine or ecstasy or special care, whatever you want to talk. So we all had different tendencies. And then some people change dramatically, some don't. But all in all, Jonah Hill, shout out to you, respect, happy. He had a kid a month ago. Congratulations. Yeah. Tov. I'm so freaking happy for that guy. Yes. Yep. I am so happy for the life changing for what he's doing. And he's a sick, incredible, talented actor himself. Maybe one of the most entertaining ones to watch. And no whether doubt. he does a serious movie or a funny movie, the guy's a freaking no incredible doubt. Super artist. Super bad. Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. And just quick shout out. Shout out to you, Vinny, for easing up on your hoe tendencies <laughs> and going to church. <laughs> Respect to you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a, it was uh, and it was just it was random. It wasn't like yeah. nobody, I'm not saying they didn't invite me or anything. It was just like you said, you get you get to a point where you're just like, wait a minute. What am I something in here said to do it? And it's just like now you like I have a whole different lens but on in, life and looks environment, great. Environment, environment works. I mean, yes. 100%. Environment works. Yeah. It's the right environment. You know, okay. some people might consider it called growing up, bro. Don't ever say the G word. <laughs> Rap. Let's go to the MSNBC story. Apparently, everybody here is a, is a right wing. Uh, uh, if you do work out, do you know the story I'm talking about? No. Yes. no okay, go to my tweet if you want. I have it all the way at the top. You'll, you'll find the story. Uh, you go you go to the top. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, click on it. Yeah, there you go. A little lower, a little lower, a little lower. Boom, right there, MSNBC, uh, <laughs> zoom in. Uh, it says, uh, 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 no, go back to the tweet on how they tweeted it. Okay, it says, <laughs> the far right's obsession with fitness is going digital. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's not crazy. Wait. The yeah. far right, so I, I retweeted it and I put something at the top. I said, does the opposite also mean, go a little lower, does the opposite also mean it's true? The far left's obsession with being fat and lazy is going digital. I mean, not ironically, <laughs> yes. So Isn't that it's crazy? Kind of like, yeah, so if you work out, even Joe said, wait a minute, now if I work out, I'm a right wing? <laughs> far Holy, right. Yeah, far, far right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but, by the way, <laughs> let's say if they are saying that, okay? So, so moving forward, every time I see somebody who is willing to take the time to work out, they're disciplined with their diet, they go to the gym three, four times, they're detailed with... You know, chest and back and sh shoulders and triceps or biceps and tries and legs. And they're very disciplined with all that stuff. That's a right wing. Well, Not guess what? Yeah. You know you know what the Republicans should do? They should use this and say, guess what? Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. We like to stay healthy. Lean into it. You guys like vaccines? We like to work out. Yeah. You guys like to use, like, even Peter Hotez. Hey, do you work out? No, nah, not really. What do you eat? Yeah, I eat a lot of junk food. Dude, don't you think that's bad for you? Do you take vitamins? No, vitamins don't really work. You know, I only take vaccines. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, we they've actually about done here? studies about this. If you are a man and you go to the gym, you work out, and you have higher testosterone, you are more likely to be right wing than Correct. I've uh, seen these I mean, studies. left yes. wing. And I, I don't think it's a mystery as to why, because a lot of the 
I guess, mentality that would lead to someone going to the gym, self-improvement, personal responsibility, discipline. Those are more inherently conservative than socialist, not to mention just the, I guess, uh, you know, if you go to the gym, your testosterone levels are going to be higher because you're exercising and you being having a higher testosterone level is more commonly associated with right wing values because it's like you're you're less effeminate, less willing to nurture, redistribute, uh, all those so things. You're saying most steroids dealers are Republicans. With perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. I know in the US That would have been a better article. Yeah. Well just look at the UFC. The UFC I mean I'm not gonna say everyone who's a, a pro fighter is going to be Republican or right wing, but that is one of the few sports where I think you see a lot a lot of even if they're not openly it, we like I know for a fact that a lot of people in that sphere professional fighting they are conservative they do lean right oh when they see trump they like a fighter this uh, past weekend yeah. jumped out of the ring and was like mr trump like i love you but so I, well, I, dude, I didn't know that going to the gym like yeah well i'm a racist there, jesus there, christ it's so absurd I'm there, there are a, to to confirm what you're saying there have been studies out what? there that attribute being a little bit more attractive to being a little bit more conservative mm -hmm. right-wing free thinking because it comes down to personal accountability Right. And that's really what it comes down to. There's multiple studies like this. But this, to me, I'd like to see the studies they get where it, it just seems bullshit on the surface. Because I know so many people, left, right, center, up, down, gay, straight, who just are want to look good and take care of themselves. I mean, I live in Miami and South Beach. You have no idea how many gay guys are out there looking <laughs> fucking incredible. They look great. No, I mean, I'm not into that thing. but Whatever, you know, they can still look great. But it's, it's just so absurd. So I, I fully agree with Pat. If you're on the GOP, embrace the hell out of yeah. this. The left are just fat, sloppy, lazy losers wait, uh, uh, relying on vaccines, and you're taking personal accountability and personal responsibility for your health if you're on the right. So it's, it's, a, it's, a bad, it's a bad look for, yes. for MSNBC to write that. <laughs> I, I, I would run with it. I'm telling you. Yes. If I'm on the other yes. side, I'm going to run. Even MSNBC says, you know, we're in shape. We have the right habits, and the other side doesn't. Anyways, next story, since you're talking about this. Trump shares a jovial handshake with Joe Rogan, who once called him a man baby mm -hmm. and an existential threat to democracy. Former Donald Trump shared a friendly handshake with Joe Rogan at the UFC fight in Las Vegas. Despite Rogan previously calling Trump a man baby, Trump uh, enthusiastically approached Rogan at the event, and the two engage in a, a, a friendly conversation, a... 10-second handshake. Rogan has been critical of Trump in the past, referring to him as a man-baby and declining opportunities to interview him. Rogan expressed his lack of support for Trump, stating that he doesn't want to help him and views him as an existential threat to democracy. Despite their differences, Trump and Rogan had a cordial interaction at the UFC fight. And so Pat, the go question, up, the go, 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 go The question becomes the following, okay, when you see this, okay? Yeah. If you look at this, because I want you to see this, go back to the handshake to show this. You know, I love these handshakes, Pat. Yeah. He, they're the most aggressive. Trump <laughs> is always playing tug of war. Get over like, here, look, look at his handshake. In, look at yeah. that. He's like, get in here. Watch, watch. I love it. He goes, you're a good guy. You're a good look at You could just see he's complimenting Rogan. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He's like, Thank we should you. have a talk. So here's the question. Yes, sir. Over under the podcast taking place with Trump and Rogan. 80% yes. It's gonna happen. 80%. I say I think it is gonna happen. I'm not gonna give a percentage, but I give a percentage, Lauren. Okay. Take a risk. Sixty-seven. Oh wow! Yeah. That it, it's happening. That Two thirds happening. is okay. how she's doing it. I think eighty percent. Where are you going with this? Well, I'm asking you. I asked. Okay. You Pat looks well, like he has an insider. Uh, look at Pat's grin. See that? It's like, cheating if you're. Pat has that look sure that his son has when he knows track. he messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Pat knows. See that laugh? All right. So you want to go first? Well, I'll just cite two quotes. You set up the man baby thing that was on a podcast he did with Tom Segura in. 2022. It's yeah. not a 2016 conversation. And then in 2022, Rogan had a podcast with Lex Friedman. And he said, uh, he was asked multiple times, would you do a podcast? He said, no, 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 no. Every single time, quote unquote, I have no interest in helping him. This is in 2022. So as of a year ago, it was 0%. I think at this point, based on the UFC audience, how things have changed quite significantly, I will give it a, and I think it's a high number, 20%. What? Wow. Yes. But Pat, it no goes off of what you what, what you what You're saying just, 80, you're saying I think 80% he's going to do it. And Pat, this just yes. goes into what we just talked about. Like tolerance and like he's changing as a person. Like, bro, he's seeing the light. He, Joe Rogan was anti-Trump and everything right now. But now that he's seeing what the left has yeah. done, he's pro-Trump right now. I don't care what anybody uh, says, bro. He's shaking his hand, smiling. Which, which he was a fan. Is that? Is from, that, he that called him a Lex man Friedman? baby a year ago. A year ago. Well, a, year, a lot can change in a year. This is true. Man, baby. It doesn't mean he doesn't want to interview him. You want to yeah. play well, I'm that? just glad that, that he's that, still considered a man. Yeah. 
Oh, is that what you're talking about, what he said? What did he say here? This is the Lex Fridman interview from last year where he said he won an interview. Play it, Rob. Lex Fredman. Wow. I Fredman. Know. I didn't know. Not, <laughs> not <laughs> Friedman, Rob. Well, he didn't want to say that because Rob's been going to the gym, yeah. so he doesn't want to be a, considered yeah, a white man. That beard in January 6th. shakes hands with people that aren't even there when he gets off stage. Yeah. I think he's seeing ghosts. Yeah. Biden. Did you see him on yeah. Jimmy Kimmel the other day? No. Well, he was just rambling. I mean, he's if he was anyone else... <laughs> If he was a Republican, if that was Donald Trump doing that, every fucking talk show would be screaming for him to be off the air. Mm -hmm. And I'm, by the way, I'm not a Trump supporter in any way, shape, or form. I've had the opportunity to have him on my show more than once. I've said no every time. I don't want to help him. I'm not interested in helping the, the, him. The, the, the night is still young. We'll see. If I have him on, the night yeah. is still young? Yeah. You think well, I'll have him on? I think you'll have him on. Really? Yeah. Why do you think that? Because you'll have Putin on? <laughs> <laughs> and you're complaining as fuck. No. Uh, <laughs> you can pause it right there. What's the date on that? Timestamp that? This is. Well, this that is came out July 5th of but, 2022. But, uh, like, so that's exactly a year your, ago. Yeah. Pat, yeah. but think about this. I don't yeah. want to help him, but the Biden and the left, I don't say because Biden has no idea. He's not yeah. making decisions. Yeah. They have they have shit on this country so much. Now it's not what now he's gonna help him. No, now he he's a prime example of seeing just what the media and everybody did to the left. Go ahead, and what? No, no. Before Pat re uh, yeah. reveals his results, yeah. you want to have a bet? Let's have a bet. All right, I'll bet you a thousand dollars. A thousand bucks that he does not have him on. That he doesn't interview him. Correct. Wait, by when? By oh god! By the time that Trump the presidency is is or, or is not the president before November second or third. Sure. You're saying a thousand dollars he doesn't interview him. Yeah. It's a good bet. I'll go five hundred bucks. <laughs> hey, listen, Vinny. What happened to having conviction? No, no, no. What happened not. to having tolerance, Vincent? I think five hundred bucks is a big number. Five hundred so, bucks. Do you want to do it? I'll bet Seven hundred. Adam, the 500. idea is five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. You want to do it? All right. I don't usually uh, do bets for less than a thousand. Okay, but fine, relax, Vinny. Mr. Miami. All right. Okay. Five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. We'll pay, I'll pay it. We'll pay it live. Verbal yeah. agreement. Verbal. Uh, digital. By, by the election. So you're saying, saying it's not going to happen. I'm saying it's not going to happen. Before election. Correct. And if it happens, I pay you five hundred okay. bucks. Uh, that's five hundred. And if so, it doesn't happen, got you. So here's you what pay? I would say. Yes. So here's what I would say. I think the the one thing that's been very consistent with Joe Rogan over the years. That he's so open-minded that his positions can change. Yeah. Yes. Okay. True. He never thought he would have RFK on before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now he had RFK on. Even the opening, he says, "Look, I thought you were a loon. I thought this. I thought that. I thought this. But then listen, I met you, Casa de Angelo. Okay, you know, but whatever. No, he didn't say Casa de. Angelo. I met you in uh, Aspen. We talked. I'm like, okay, I want to have you on. And I, you know, I thought it was all this vaccine stuff. And I was a guy that was a vaccine person. But you're making a lot of sense. And I read the book. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. He's done this." So many times. He went from Bernie Sanders to St. Voting Republican. Okay, Correct. The evolution so, of Joe. So meaning there is that evolution with Joe for this to take place. Here's the other part. The whole concept about uh, 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 I've shared with Joe what my thoughts are on, on the interview with Trump. He, he, he knows it. But um, the idea about I don't want to help him has to be replaced, in my opinion. You're not helping him. You're helping America. Bernie. Meaning yep. if the idea is you don't want to help America? I think, Joe, you want to help America, and you've been helping America. In my opinion, you're the number one guy. You're the GOAT when it comes down to podcasting. And not only that, during COVID, the, 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 the most super necessary guy in America was him. Forget before Musk buying uh, Twitter in October of 2022. Before any of that, it was Joe Rogan. Not okay? Dr. Fauci, Pat? No. So, so, so the, point, the point I'm trying to make is yeah. if— you believe America needs to see the opposing side of the argument. I think Joe needs to have uh, Trump on. I think he needs to have DeSantis on. I think he needs to have Newsom on. Uh, because Biden. I think it's going to be Newsom. Biden won't go. They would, in a million he would years. never. But agree I would. To but I would die to see that. Yeah. Uh, but I would love to. You see know what I would love to see. Yeah. If since he smokes weed with Elon Musk, yeah. I would love to see Joe Rogan smoke crack with Hunter Biden. Oh. <laughs> I just, I mean, Joe doesn't need to smoke it, but I think that would be views. I would We're in an eyeball so attention funny. economy. Well, I'm here so with Hunter Biden I smoking think, some crack. I think eventually so funny. Uh, uh, it's more likely to happen. I'm more 55%. Could we bump? 55%, yes. Yeah. So you want to bump it to 1,000? Okay. 
Oh, all of a sudden. <laughs> because I don't know. I, I know it just shows it you have no conviction, buddy. I, I bet $500, but I'm okay. not, you know. So yeah. you're at 80%. You're at, at 80. 67%. Yeah, I do. Th I you're do think You're at 55. I'm at 20. Rogan's saying he doesn't want to help him, but it seems like, at least with RFK, his approach wasn't necessarily, I'm helping you or not helping you. It's just, mm -hmm. we're just having a conversation right. and people can decide. And, you know, if, if Trump is an idiot, if he's uh, an extremist, if he's whatever, ha sitting down for three hours, people are going to see through that. So it might even hurt him. Who knows? But I think mm -hmm. his audience would decide. And I think Rogan likes to that. be clear. I, I actually would like to see that of interview. Yeah. I'm actually I'll gladly lose five hundred dollars if it means we can to see, see that. that interview. I think it'd be amazing. Yeah. But I think we're doing a disservice to uh, Trump to compare RFK's viewpoints to where how he feels about Trump. This is this has nothing to do with RFK. No, I, what I'm saying yeah. he, no, no, he criticized no. some of his views, but he still had him on. No. Yeah. It's a different beast with Trump. What do you mean? With with how I mean, the interview with Trump's going to do versus RFK? Meaning his feelings about RFK were not as intense or exaggerated as they are with Trump. He never called RFK a man baby. Yeah. And he yeah. never said he would never want to have... Very, very interesting individual with a high self-awareness and a level of comfort of being wrong and a level of convic conviction in areas where he is certain that he's right. And you know, th this is this is a guy that if there's a guy that, uh, you know, would be able to, you know, interview, would be able to change his position and be open to the idea, it's Joe. And if that happens, so I'll let you guys know if that happens. It's kind of going <laughs> to be done 2024, Doug. Yeah. It's going to be like, hey, yep. kiss it goodbye, everybody else. Go home, pack, you know. So it's play a your rap. video game. It's a it's a rap. Rap. It's a I, I want to say what you're saying. You're saying that if he has him on, that that will mean Trump will win the White House. If he has him on, uh, okay. So for example, Maria Bartiromo. Let me just read this to you. Okay, and this this yeah. is kind of Maria Bartiromo confronts DeSantis on 2024 campaign. What happened? Right. This is a Newsweek story. And if you want to pull up the clip, if you actually have the clip, I don't know if you got it or not. If you can just go to that part where he asks the she asked the question. Uh, uh, is this, yeah, this is the part. Go ahead and play it. Watch this. Back against woke, we know that, but I'm wondering what's going on with your campaign. There was a lot of optimism about you running for Listen president earlier in the year, but here's this weekend's headline from the Politico playbook. Failure to launch Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' <laughs> campaign to topple Donald Trump has stalled. We are way behind, <laughs> says a top DeSantis PAC official, sounding the alarm. What happened? <laughs> oh, Maria, these are narratives. The media does not want me to be the nominee. I think that's very, very clear. Why? Because they know I'll beat Biden. But even more importantly, they know I will actually deliver on all these things. We will stop the invasion at the border. We'll take on the drug cartels. We'll curtail the administrative state. We'll get spending under control. We'll do all the things that they don't want uh, to see done. And so they're going to continue doing uh, the type of narrative. I can tell you, uh, we understand this is a state by state process. Uh, we've had incredible support um, in the early states, building an organization, signing up Has the key you people yet? that you need <laughs> to be able to I'm compete gone. in a place okay. like Iowa. I'm we gone. just launched so, our mom. Okay, you can pause it right there. Here's the thing. By the way, he ain't lying, meaning he wouldn't make one hell of a president. I agree. He, he would have incredible policies. He would do all of those things. But you're going up against a guy that's a marketer, and your marketing team sucks. Yeah. You've been saying Absolutely that for Absolutely sucks he doesn't since have the, the book came out. The razzle dazzle but of Trump. He needs he, to throw in some horse faces yeah, here he and there. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. have horse face, like a <laughs> comment? No, like Call, Stormy Daniels. Yeah, 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 you know. But, some excitement. <laughs> <laughs> he needs some whole tendencies <laughs> coming up. <laughs> I hooked up with DeSantis 17 years ago. <laughs> some gay, he needs like, that even, to get. Even a gay, even a gay guy going, yeah, that's even more exciting. You are so funny. A gay guy blew you? No, but you know what it is? Uh -huh. Here, here's the part. The, the the point I'm trying to make is, yeah, you know, it, 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 <laughs> so there's one. You have an incredible resume. Check. You have it. Two is, you're going into the interview, okay. The person you already got the interview, like you got the uh, people. You're being considered for the job. You're a finalist. You're in the top three finalists to be considered for the job. So the resume got you into the interview. Then you have to crush the interview, and you ruin the interview. <laughs> if Trump goes in with the resume, and then he goes in the interview, 
that's where he shines. He's shining when the interview begins. This guy's like, here's my resume. Let me tell you what I've done. This is why you should pick me. That's not how America works. Well, it's funny because yeah. for so long, people have been critical of Trump being unpredictable, kind of brash and abrasive. But it turns out that maybe you need a candidate with at least a little bit of that because you have yeah. someone like Ron DeSantis. I like Trump. I like Ron DeSantis. I don't think it needs to be either or. But he doesn't have the same star power, the same charisma, which in politics, let's be real. Of course, that matters. By the of course way, that matters. by the way. OK, so let, let's let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, the star power. By the way, his team, I've communicated with both teams, with Trump's team, with his team, with RFK's team, with Vivek's team. We're in communication with every one of the teams. Suarez. Do, do you know which team sucks in follow-up or getting back to us? They sense. text in a text and then boom. Okay, I'm available this afternoon. Great. No follow-up for two weeks. They're the worst in follow-up. It's a reflection of the brand. It's not a good look. And this is not like it's a small podcast. We got 17 subscribers and you're doing this with. We got a platform to say this to the market. Your follow-up sucks with people that are reaching out to you. And we communicate with every campaign. So you're talking about, uh, and FYI, I keep saying this. We came here because of this guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're in Florida because of this guy. I've moved, I don't know how many people we've moved out. If I tell you, in the last 26 months, 28 months, if I told, tell you 1,500 people have moved to Florida because of what we've done, that would be a small number. We've moved a couple thousand people to Florida with the amount of times we've raved about him, raved about the state. We've moved people to the state. And these are high-quality people that we moved to the state. These are not non-performing people. These are job creators, entrepreneurs that we have moved to this state. There is support there. You're saying uh, you have to be able to sell yourself, right? Okay. Let me give you another example of somebody that I think campaign to campaign, campaign to campaign, Vivek is crushing their campaign. Mm -hmm. And Vivek had nothing. Who was Vivek? Well, I mean, he was a best-selling author, multi-millionaire entrepreneur. No, he but but the difference is, but but the difference is, let me let me put it to you this way. Day one, when Vivek announced he's running for office, do you know what his Twitter account was at? 40,000 followers? 60,000 followers? I'm sorry. Even the woke book he wrote, it didn't blow up. Can you go to Amazon? Go to Amazon and type in Vivek. Go to Amazon and type in Vivek. We had him on, and, and he and I, we spoke yesterday. Go go on him on and, and put his name there. Okay. When he first came out with his woke book, just type in Vivek Ramazwani and go to his book. Uh, uh, okay. How many, uh, what is that? That's Vivek. What year? 2023. How many months ago? Uh, yeah. This book came out April of 2023. It has uh, 57 four and a half reviews. Okay. Go to the next book. That, that, by the way, 57 reviews. To be fair, guys, and I like this guy, that's nothing. <laughs> Nation of Victims. How many reviews is that? 372 reviews a year ago. That's barely selling 30,000 copies, by the way, just so you know that. That number on Amazon, that's nothing. But what has this guy done? Here's what he's done. He went on Charlemagne the God, the breakfast club. You know what they try to do to him? Destroy him. You know what he did? He stood his ground. Mm -hmm. he went Same on with news CNN. Yeah. Same with CNN. He went on CNN. He went on, he's gone everywhere. He's not said no to anything, and he stood his ground. When Don Lemon tried to embarrass him, he stood his ground. He says, that's fine. You can believe that, but we can disagree, and he was so respectful about it. The way Ramaswani went out there saying, I'm not afraid, him and RFK get A's, in the way they've gone out talking, DeSantis's camp is thinking they're entitled to that, to the throne, and you don't get the championship ring given to you. You got to go earn that stuff. By the way, whether you're injured, whether you're not in the mood, when you go into the playoffs in sports, what happens during playoffs? What does everybody say during playoffs when people do the interviews? Like when Joel Embiid says, well, I was really hurt and I was this. You know what champions say? Listen, when you're in the playoffs everybody is at 50 percent 60 percent everybody's dealing with an injury you got a finger you got a knee you got, got a flu. back you got a this you got a that you don't have a choice you have to show up in the playoffs right it's very disappointing and and by the way yesterday we we're having this conversation with a group of people and some of the guys said he's the modern day jeb bush and he's a modern day <laughs> scott not, walker that's not hang on a second the <laughs> modern day jeb bush and a modern day scott walker not because of resume his resume is possibly the greatest right. governor in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Since I've been in America, no one's got a better resume than him. But his campaign is Jeb Bush and Scott Walker 2.0. And Pat, you were, you've been saying this, Pat, not, not to cut you off. You've been saying this for how long about the marketing team and everything about him. My question is, 
as as being at the candidate being DeSantis, how does he not see it? Are you not hearing? Like she's she just said it. The the people are seeing your numbers are showing it. Does he need to just do a complete shift pat and like fire somebody or hire a better marketing team? They are horrible. How are they not texting somebody back that is like, yo, I have this platform, millions and It's not just I have a platform. I'll do a fundraiser for you. Yeah. We'll raise mm -hmm. a ton of money. Yeah. We'll get you eyeballs. We'll have a fair interview with you because we respect you. Mm -hmm. Let's have this exchange. Multiple times the team doesn't give back. Not one time. Multiple. I'm not going to give names yet. Okay. But I'm going to give names within a year. Okay. Multiple times they don't give back to you. Yeah. Multiple times they don't give back to you. And by the way, I'm not the only one saying it as well. Megan Kelly, have you got, say Megan Kelly is one of the greatest. She's a top five in the last 10 years. What are you doing not going on, Megan Kelly? What are you doing not going on any of this stuff? What are you doing not going on Lex Free? I don't know. Has Lex done a podcast with DeSantis yet? No, I don't has, think so. I don't can, believe it. Can you look it up? What are you doing no. not going on Lex? Lex is a very, very nice guy. Yeah. Lex is a sweetheart of a guy that's going to ask you questions, but he's so respectful about it. How come you haven't gone on Lex? And he'll be fair to you as well. Can I just give some quick numbers just to validate exactly what you're saying? In February, what month are we in right now? July? July. Yeah. So less than six months ago, go, go up, Rob, just to the top, to the top left. Who's the head of the Republican primary polls? Boom. In February, between Trump and DeSantis, neck and neck. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. To the left. They were one was at 38%, one was at 42%. Anyone's race, anyone's race in February. Failure to launch, what do they call his campaign? His book came out six months before he actually announced. Pat's called out his marketing team. Now go to all the way to the right. Just look at the numbers. Trump's at 52%. DeSantis has plummeted from 38 down to, what is that, less than 20? 24? What is that, Rob? Doesn't say here on the chart, right, but it's right. hovering right around between 20, yeah. like 23. So the point is this. Whatever he's doing... It's fair to say it's not working. So you should change. You should change things up. Even I mean, You got to adjust. You got to adapt. Yeah. I'm yeah. in Florida for TV. You got to go USA. into halftime and say, listen, guys, someone's got to give a halftime speech. Let's change it up a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah. Bro. I mean, I'm in Florida for TP USA, and we have a sister organization, Turning Point Action. Uh, there's a huge conference. I mean, Trump is speaking. Uh, Tucker Carlson is speaking. DeSantis isn't speaking. I'm not part of that organization you know it's just they're they're separate because is of the is really not speaking he's not speaking i mean he hasn't been announced yet and some people there are some people are wondering why he isn't there is it because he doesn't want to go in the same event be speaking with trump and I, I i don't know but i would love to see more of him because he's been one of like you said the most effective governors he's been aggressive in his policy which i love he's not one of these republicans who is simply trying to be on offense all the time he's actually saying okay parental rights and education boom let's do it let's go off after disney we're not just going to talk which i love i've been in communication with his administration there was a video that i shared of uh, this topless trans stripper with a i mean she looked like four years old it wasn't just talk for the campaign. They're actually doing things about it. They're trying to do an investigation, see if they should keep their liquor license. I love how effective they are. But like you said, the campaign, it just, it's, it's Got to show up. Listen, you know. when you get to the interview, you best deliver when you're sitting across the decision maker. You know who the decision maker right now is? America. And Americans right now are saying, no, you're not fit for the job yet. Maybe never. FYI. I'll never forget. I will never forget when the Pacers are playing the Miami Heat and timeout is called, Indiana is up one. This is game two. Game three, they're about to go up 2-1. This is okay? 2012. Yes. Wow. yes. 11 years ago. Nice. Okay. They're up one. Coach Vogel takes out Roy Hibbert, who was the center of starter, uh, all-star game yeah, that year. Roy Hibbert. He yeah. takes Hibbert out. And like, what are you doing? There's two seconds left on the shot clock. Hibbert's on the sideline shaking and said, what are you doing taking me out? Miami takes the ball, gives it to LeBron at the free throw line. LeBron goes this way, fakes, going with a left hand. They win the game. Afterwards, mm -hmm. they're talking TNT. And Chuck says, well, you know, the, Frank's got to tell him right now, we're so close and this is our chance to go to the championship. And Kenny Smith says, no, Charles, I disagree. He says, what do you mean you disagree? He says, this may have been their last chance to ever win a championship. Wow. These players don't realize mm -hmm. when you get an opportunity like this, championships are not handed out. You should have kept Hibbert in. What are you doing taking him out? Guess what? He was right. Hibbert went like this after that. Nobody ever talked about him again. And that entire team, Paul George, everybody, they had collapsed Vogel. Everybody went all over the place. 
This idea of thinking, well, this doesn't work, we'll do 20 of this doesn't work. Skywalker, this doesn't work, Jet Bush doesn't work, this doesn't work. No, this is not how life works. You have the sickest resume today. You crushed it under COVID. You even had MBA, like the storytelling. Why are you not talking about the most liberal BLM? Think about the hypocrisy. MBA had BLM all over the place. And as much as that BLM all over the place, they chose to hold the all-star game in your state while you're the governor. How the hell are you not telling that story? You crushed it, and you're not telling that story. I don't understand this stuff. It's so confusing. This should have been like this. Trump and DeSantis should have been like this. And by the way, that's better for America if it would have been like this because they're pushing issues. There is no issues right now. We're not hearing any issues right now. All we're seeing is this. Mm -hmm. It's over for most people. Some people say, why should even Trump get on the stage? Can you imagine if Trump doesn't even get on the stage? He doesn't need to. He doesn't yeah. need to get on the stage. It was like, yeah, yeah, Maria asked him a question. Are you going to be on the stage? So, well, yeah, of course I'm going to be doing the debate. But this is you have to win by the state and all this other stuff. No, not for for president. Yes, it's by state. But not for Republican. That's mm -hmm. for. Yep. Anyway, so it's a whole different story on what's going on here. So for me, Trump goes on Rogan. He's going to put on a show. You know what he's going to do. He's going to do flattery. Joe, you're the greatest, you know, this, 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 that. All of that stuff's going to happen. They're going to connect. They're going to laugh. He's going to make Joe laugh his ass off. Those clips are going to be put up. At the end of it, Joe's probably, you know, hey, sir, I got to tell you my position here, but I really enjoyed you with you. Hopefully, you're going to kind of tone it down a little bit with the way you do this, this, this with tweets. He says, I'm working on it, and then boom, the world's going to see that and humanize him, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that if Trump gets that opportunity to be on Joe, he'll capitalize. I think so, too. Can I just add one thing? Because yeah. I know our audience isn't a sports audience. So yeah, I, just, I'm not going to lie. That was lost on No, me. no, no, no. But, <laughs> I, but I, I like the passion. I get that. But here's the deal. <laughs> what he's saying is carpe diem. Seize the mother freaking day. In February, the, here are the numbers. 40% Trump, 38% DeSantis. Yeah. Now it's 52-21. He tells this random 2012 NBA playoff story as a metaphor. The Indiana Pacers were this close to dethroning to the Miami Heat and LeBron James. What has happened since then, since this stupid decision that the coach made? Indiana Pacers have barely even made it the playoffs. That team has been dismantled. Danny Granger, Paul George, Roy Hibbard is out of the league. Meanwhile, LeBron James, a.k.a. Trump in this story, has won four NBA championships since then. He's still the face of the league. Meanwhile, the other players are out of the freaking league. He also brought up Scott Walker, Jeb Bush. These people are in the in the dustbin of history. You, and that could potentially happen you, to DeSantis you, you if he doesn't carpe chance. diem. No, yeah, you man. don't get a second chance. Do you, okay. do you think he should have waited until the no. next election cycle? No, not at all. Because a lot of people are saying, oh, 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 hey, I'm sorry, till the next election's is, out. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying you, no. you should have waited to go on later. Oh, no. You're saying to go 2028. Okay, that's a very good question. I, I think he should have ran because you're going to forget. We, we forget things very quickly. America, as much as America can bitch and complain, we're so forgiven so quickly and we move on. You know, we, we, we like to see you fall, but we like you come up even more. We love redemption stories. This is America. America is a place that we're like, hey, man, you're a loser. You're a moron. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Oh, shit, I feel bad. Hey, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's, that's America, right? Yeah. It's, that's kind of America. So that's what's going to happen with Trump. But he had his moment. It was so clear. Yeah. So clear. Marketing team sucked. Who was in his ear sucked. Whoever he hired. It's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. And by the way, again, this is coming from a community who are fans, mm -hmm. who are supporters, who voted unanimously. Like in every possible way, it's for you and you did this. Anyways, watch what's happening here to transition this story. Ramaswamy closes in on DeSantis as Trump dominates in GOP poll, The Hill. Former President Trump leads the GOP primary uh, uh, field with 49% support, according to a recent poll by Echelon Insights. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis follows in second place with 16, while biotech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy is behind them with 10%. Ramaswamy has been a 2 percentage point increase in support since a previous poll conducted in May where he had 8%. In contrast, DeSantis has experienced a 3 percentage drop since May when he garnered 19 points. Con concerns with DeSantis' vi viability as a candidate has emerged, particularly following a glitchy Twitter spaces. I'm not worried about that one. Right, His recent criticism of Trump post support for LGBT community has drawn backlash from GOP groups such as law cabin Republicans. Those things I'm not concerned about. But the part is Vivek. Okay, 
Why, why do you think Vivek is getting this surge? What, what do you think is getting Kim to get people to say, man, I kind of like this guy. I kind of like what he has to say. He's not scared to open his mouth, Pat. Like just yesterday, I think it was yesterday, some uh, lady in the back, uh, he was doing some 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 talk in like a, in like a not an auditorium, like an open area. And At she's town like, hall. town hall. And she's like, it's my body, my choice. I have a kid. And it was like an exchange where the lady was leaving. He's like, no, no. Come back here. Let's have a conversation. She came to the stage. She started crying. He's having, but I think he's not scared to talk. He's not scared to voice opinion. And Pat, marketing, he's not saying no he's to anything. He has he, brass and he's, and, and he's smart as hell. And he's probably one of the most efficient and effective communicators that's running right now, regardless of whether you like him or not. He has uh, his hand on the pulse of cultural issues, which would have been DeSantis's, I guess, his trump card. All right. I mean, he's someone who's actually not just talking about the culture war. He's actively fighting it but he doesn't do a good job articulating it in the same way that Vivek does I mean he he's he's been on the Daily Wire before he even announced he is very very he knows what the average voter cares about and I think if we look at what happened in Virginia with Glenn Youngkin, Youngkin I mean this isn't just oh culture war stuff it doesn't matter no these issues they're getting people out and they're getting especially suburban moms to vote so I think he's really playing his cards right just overall yeah I, I, I love the way he communicates I love the way how respectful he is I love the way he pushes back but more importantly, I love how hard he's working. He's everywhere. You know what's one of the most intimidating things to do to your competitors? I love doing this. <laughs> in the insurance space or any kind of business, when we were first coming up in our podcast at small YouTube channel, we had like 50,000 subs, okay, Valuetainment. We got 4.5 million. Now at the time, it was 50,000 subs. And I'm in Dallas. Who the hell wants to interview in Dallas? Nobody wants to go to freaking Dallas. The only people that are in Dallas are the conservatives. The only person I had was the Blaze. I had nobody else. So I want to re re interview everybody. But everyone's in, Dallas. everyone's in L.A., Miami, all this stuff. You know what we did? We'd go to New York. I'd rent a hotel room. And I would do six, seven, eight interviews in two days. Back to back to back to back. So I got notes like this. Next guest. Next guest. Next guest. Next guest. Next guest. We'd go to Miami. Seven interviews. We'd go to L.A. Twelve interviews. And then we would have enough interviews over the next... Two, three, four weeks while I'm running a company, while we're having baby after baby after baby, while I'm going national visiting offices, all this stuff is happening. It's so intimidating to see Vivek everywhere. It's as if he's got triplets. It's him and two <laughs> other brothers. Yeah. One minute is here, next minute is this. Like, how the hell are you everywhere? That is so draining to your enemy, to your competitors to say, yeah, I'm not willing to do this unless if you're willing to come to Tallahassee to interview me, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, you're, you're going to lose to a guy like this. Yeah. You're going to lose to a guy like this that's willing to go everywhere and anywhere to talk to anybody. He's gaining that kind of respect. By the way, if you would like to see us do a live podcast at 5990 Live with Vivek, I'm talking town hall where you can ask him questions. If you would like to do that, text the word podcast to 310 Three four zero one one three two three one zero three four zero one one three two. Text the word podcast to that number. We are thinking about who to have next. I'm doing a July twentieth live podcast. Those tickets that have already sold out. But the next one we're doing, we're talking to potentially many different camps. If you'd like to see a live podcast with Vivek, again, text the word podcast to three one zero three four zero. One, one, three, two. Next topic, Sound of Freedom. Have you seen the movie yet? So a lot of people have asked me this. Yeah. Uh, as a new mom, I don't think I can emotionally handle it okay. just because of That's the subject fair. matter. And I, I, I cry during Pixar movies. I'd be a total mess. Well, <laughs> have you seen Elemental? I Yes, I did. Get a, I didn't even like the movie. I got teary at. I'm very, very okay. easy. So so I saw the movie. So here's what happens. We're in, we're in uh, Bahamas. Uh, and uh, we're trying to find a movie theater to go see this. We can't find it. Finally, finally Tikram finds the movie, and we're like, shit, we, we're going with 25 of us, and the kids want to watch Indiana Jones. What do we do? So Indiana Jones is playing at 1 o'clock. Sound of Freedom is playing at 2 uh, two o'clock. Good news, Indiana Jones is a two-and-a-half-hour movie, which is great because we got like a 30-minute. So we go into Indiana Jones. We're watching Indiana Jones, and then me, Matt Sapala, Sheena, Tikram, we sneak out, and we go to watch Sound of Freedom. We're sitting there. And from the beginning, you're going to feel the pain of the father taking his kids, a daughter and a son, who was approached by a recruiter saying, your kids can be models, they can be in movies. He says, tonight audition is at such and such time. Today the audition is, tomorrow's audition is such and such time. Father dresses in a suit, takes him to this room, and he takes the kids there, they're excited, put the kids in the room, and the girl says, come back to pick them up at seven o'clock. <laughs> he says, what do you mean? Come back to pick them up at seven o'clock. He leaves, comes back seven o'clock, no one's there. Shut down. That's how the movie starts. Yeah. By the way, it's disturbing. It's emotional. It's tough. It's painful. 
At the end, Jim Caviezel gives a message. When the movie ends, three minutes later, he's given a message, profound message that you have to watch. The stats that they gave, that uh, 20 plus million child pornography pictures were uploaded on the internet the last year, a 5,000% increase in the last five years. The idea where they said every year 2 million kids go into trafficking, going into being sold in a black market, and then stats about how you can sell cocaine one time, but you can sell the same child mm. five to ten times a day for ten years is what you can do, and it's a $150 billion a year industry, and Jim is in it, the story of Tim Ballard, what he did, and then while this is going on, everybody, everybody needs to go watch it. I'm take, I want to watch it first. It, it's a decision you need to make. I want to watch it first. I know what it is to be a, you know, I don't know what it is to be a mother, but I have a wife that's had four kids, and I know how tough it is for a mother to see it. Then a father, our perspective is more protective. Mm -hmm. Yours is more, you gave birth, it's your body. Um, I recommend everybody to go watch this thing here and share it with everyone you know because this has really taken place. This led us to yesterday having a, a conversation with many of the people in Glendale that are going through the challenges they're having with GUSD. We did the Zoom yesterday. We're excited about launching the event in Glendale. The biggest concern right now is every major hotel will announce what these places are and we'll give the names out so people know has said no. Every Armenian hall in Glendale has said, come and do the event on what's going on with LAUSD and GUSD, with what kind of content they're trying to put in the schools, and we will announce the date here very soon. First, we're going to announce it underground because we want the right people to show up. Then I'll announce it publicly, and everyone's worried about, you know, rioting, protesting, all this other stuff. Here's the point. While this movie comes out and it's doing so well, can you show up how Rolling Stone responded to, I send you those different screenshots, when I airdropped it to you, what Rolling Stone said about cuties versus this, what different platforms said about cuties versus this. And by the way, while you're looking for that, maybe show the clip of the video of what the CNN person said yeah. about this, if you know which one I'm talking about, where the CNN uh, is asking a question, so what do you think about this uh, movie? You know, there's a lot of people that are saying that there's some right-wing QAnon, you know. What do you think about this? And this guest, you should see what this guest right there, if he can make that bigger, you should see what this guest says about this pretty movie. Pretty familiar with him. Watch this. Go Can we with, play this? Of course. Yeah, yeah, Watch okay. this. And you seem pretty familiar with him because he doesn't really hide his association with this real wild plot uh, that that involves, you know, drinking the blood of children and things like that. No, he doesn't hide it at all. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon but claim they don't know what it is. And The Sound of Freedom does focus on a real issue of sex trafficking. Uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Uh, tell us how th those two things work together. <laughs> sure. And the most durable and the most believable conspiracy Watch theories this. are not entirely false. There's something in them that is true and the rest of it is false. But the believers point to the one true thing and they say, oh, you don't believe that this particular thing is true. In terms of child trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high-level elites and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel oh and by extension, only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie, you're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these, these pedophile rings and save children. Now, it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm you, feeling. You know why you have, have to trust this guy, Pat? He has books behind him. Anybody yeah. that sits with books. Smart. But, but notice it. If you work out, you're a white ring, you're, you're a white supremacist, whatever. If you're, by the way, this movie was docked, like they actually have footage of everything that happened uh, to uh, Tim Ballard because it happened. Did you Did, see the movie? I saw the movie. Oh, you saw it? Wow. I, I saw the movie and uh, I was telling Pat some, some crazy moments are where they actually had footage, undercover footage or surveillance footage of 
people in third world countries and stuff going up to people like a kid wanders in the street, they grab them in a van and they're gone. It's not a conspiracy theorist. And then it, it begs the question when people are like, why does one side uh, want uh, open borders? And why is it, if you think about it, Pat, there's a, there's a fact, 350,000 unaccompanied minors come across the border since 2021 till right now. 85,000 of them have gone missing. And then I, that, that begs the question, why is one side just like, no, the border's secure. Mallorca's that little rat. No, the border's open. That is just an inventory of just human beings coming in. And it's like for, for them to say that it's QAnon and it's fake, it's like they're almost, they don't want people messing with their influx of children. It's a huge problem. And yes, they made money off this movie. But now look how many people are talking about sex trafficking and these and these kids. And at least somebody now is opening their mouth. And by the way, this movie was made five years ago. I don't know if you guys, yeah. this movie's old. Now Wh which up. movie? That's Sound, Sound of Freedom. freedom. Yeah, Na it, nobody oh, wanted really? to put out. Go ahead, Lauren. Go ahead. No. Well, it was it was made by Fox before the Disney acquisition. So then Disney they they essentially didn't release it. They didn't want to release it. They they sold it to this other studio, and the studio actually had to crowdfund to get a theatrical release. So that's mm. kind of what's ironic about the fact that it did beat Indiana Jones at least for one weekend. Is that this could have been money going to Disney, but it's also kind of suspicious. Why didn't Disney want to release this movie? Was it not in line with their their yeah. branding? And by the way, isn't Disney a kids channel? Isn't it like yeah. about kids and protecting kids? So why wouldn't you want to protect kids worldwide? Isn't yeah, that kind of weird? Perhaps yeah. they don't really want yeah. to. And, and isn't it shocking, Lauren, that they're, they're talking that? all this stuff about conspiracy? Are you trying to act like Epstein didn't have an island and flew people? Yeah, that we know this for a fact it's that a this fact. happened? He was murdered. Don't believe the hype. He was suicided himself. That's all bullshit. Uh, CNN producers getting caught left and right for, for pedophilia. The, the the numbers are staggering. It's in the news. It's not reported a lot. And just, just perverted people, Pat, to catch a predator. Do you guys know that show? Yes. Disgusting. We had Chris Hansen okay, on here. Guess what? That show can be can run every single day for forever because there's an imp, there's, there's no shortage of pedophiles. The only reason that show stopped is because one of these idiot demons ran in the house and killed himself. And that's what's frustrating about that CNN guy. He's acting like moral outrage over this is bad or unwarranted. <laughs> He's right. asking as if, oh, it's to spread fear. Yeah, you should be afraid for your children. You should be actively trying to prevent this. Why is moral Bingo. outrage bad when this is something that's objectively evil? This is an area to be intolerant in. Like, zero tolerance for this. By the way, watch yes. this. So, Rolling Stone. Look, look how different the, the titles are. Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. The QAnon thing, the thriller about child trafficking, is designed to appeal to the conscience of a conspiracy addled boomer. Okay, pretty wild. Now let's go to the next one. Watch this next one here. The Guardian, Cuties Review, Netflix's controversial child exploitation film is bold, flawed, and misunderstood. <laughs> Misunderstood. Okay, so here's the next one. Cuties Review, a coming-of-age movie caught in the culture wars. Thanks to a major marketing mistake, this award-winning French movie has been accused of sexualizing girls. It's actually a sensitive portrait of growing pains that deserve to be seen. Are you, Are kidding, you me? kidding me? Go to the next one. Okay, the, the human traffic film, Sound of Freedom, trashed by liberal outlets as QAnon. Uh, adjacent. So when you when you see this, then go to the article about post millennial that talks about if you can pull this up, that talks about uh, Rolling Stone editor in chief spiked reporting on friend getting arrested for child porn. Oh. This was a story from March of uh, uh, 21st of this year. If you want to go to page 24, uh, uh, if you can pull that up, that picture right there. That's the article right there. I'll read it to you. So Rolling Stone editor in chief Noah. Uh, Schachtman removed references to child pornography charges from a story about ABC's producer James Gordon Meek, who was later charged with possessing child pornography. Schachtman, who was friendly with Meek, edited the piece and urged journalist Tatiana Siegel not to include the words child pornography in the story, claiming that the FBI's interest in Meek was unrelated to national security or journalism. Schachtman's decision to edit the story and remove key information about the child pornogra pornography investigation raised concerns within Rolling Stone. Siegel was reportedly not aware of the changes until the article was published and was angered by what she saw as interference. Schachtman justified his edits by stating that Siegel had not adequately verified her sources. <laughs> when you read this stuff, this is what we ought to be 
intolerant towards. Right. And there, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the meme from Orrin McIntyre. Uh, don't make me tap the sign. And it's just this post that says it's not that complicated. They just want to diddle kids. And I think we all have a normalcy bias where we would like to think this is just not that common, shadowy. It doesn't really affect our lives. But this is like you said, it's everywhere. It's very common. It's too common. And there are a lot of policies that we could actively change that would prevent this. Things like closing the border because there is a huge porous. I mean, I remember uh, what is it? Melania Trump. She got made fun of when she was talking about the coyotes uh, on that recorded tape mm-hmm. and how that was an issue. I mean, the left wing media is like, what is she thinks happening? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't have to say anything about it. But the fact that you're even going out of your way to discredit this problem, it's very suspicious. That's all. I'll say. It's very suspicious. They're protecting their, they're protecting their own. Like, that's 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 how the left operates for that and mind you that guy's name was miles clee the rolling stone guy who locked down his twitter account like a pussy because every, he couldn't take the the flack of like you mean to tell me girls twerking is a coming of age in the culture like what the would, hell would you qualify that as whole tendency for him <laughs> that's to, a bi- big would, time that's whole kinda, ten- okay yeah rob i just sent you something on uh, how grooming works check this out if you can play well show this meme here rob i just text you and i put it on your computer so the question then becomes the following right we got five more minutes here before we wrap up I wish we had more time, and we got like so many freaking stories to go through, but I got 11 o'clock, max 7 call. So if you can pull this up, does this work? Is this an effective strategy? Well, here we go. Let me just show you this picture here from a kid in 2015 to 2022. That's the kid on the left, now grown man on the right. Bingo. Grooming works. It's actually a very uh, wow. effective strategy. And, yes, you can convert do to your environment. Do I did a video on um, the the history of LGBTQ the dark expos, history. the dark history, and I got a lot of messages about it, Peter Pat. I don't know if you should upload this. If you haven't seen that clip, I suggest you go watch it because it tells you how it got started and, and how it was categorized just in 1973, 50 years ago, and what's been happening with these, this level of growth and conversion of people by generations. You know how they say... The older generation doesn't give a shit. They're like, the older generation doesn't give a shit what you think about them. Like, dude, if they're going to smoke weed, guess what? Who the hell are you? I'm 75 years old. I don't give a shit what you think about me. <laughs> Who cares more, the younger generation or the older generation about what other people think? Younger. The younger. The younger one of course, the older generation about. doesn't give a shit. Do you know traditionalists? What percentage of traditionalists? This is a generation before boomers. You know what percentage of traditionalists are gay? 1.7%. Do you know what percentage of Gen Z is getting? 25 19.7%. Wow. So the generation that cares Jesus. more about what people think. You haven't seen this? That's cool. Pull this up, Rob. I saw the Bill Maher thing the that generation, he did six ago. The generation that doesn't give a shit about what you and I think, only 1.7% of them are gay. The generation that gives a shit about what everybody thinks, 20% is gay. Oh, it's not because of environment they're born this way. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're there, totally right. There are studies 20%? that also yeah. You haven't seen this? I don't know if you in your video talk about the twin studies that they've done. So they uh, they they do studies or they did some studies on identical twins. So if if sexuality is inherent, you're born with it, it's in your DNA. You would expect that 100 percent of identical twins would share a sexuality, i.e. both gay, both straight, what have yeah. you. But what they've actually found is that that is not the case. There are many, many examples of identical twins that have different sexualities, indicating that mm-hmm. for at least some people. Yeah, there there is a uh, a nurture aspect of it. And what's really interesting is that women more so than men were were likely to have a different sexual identity than their identical twin. So that means that women's sexuality, or whatever you might call it, is even more fluid than that of men's. And when we see the explosion in LGBT identities, guess what? It's mainly in young teen girls who are saying they're bisexual, they're pansexual, they're gender fluid, or whatever it is. But By the way, this is, this is the poll from 2021. The one I quoted was from 2023, but even better. Look at this, Gen Z, 20.8% identify as LGBTQ. Look at traditionalists before 1946, 0.8. The 0.8 doesn't give a shit about what we think. Less than 1% of them are gay, okay? The Gen Z that cares about what everybody thinks about them, one out of five. Well, I think there's a, a recent report that says for Brown University, I want to say, yeah. I don't know if it's that specifically, but 40% of yeah, students identify as LGBT. Yeah. I wonder why. La- last thing, last thing to do here with five minutes left, guys, well, is... Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon gave a speech. If you can pull that up, Rob, if you have it. Jamie Dimon gives a speech. Uh, he's at a conference. I don't know where he's at. And they ask him about America. He gives this speech. I retweeted this. And mm. I said, anybody that's willing to sell America like this, guys, I wish there was more. The reason why I like seeing 
I respect anybody who runs whatever country they run. They should be a nationalist of their country being proud. When Putin sells uh, uh, Russia and his approval rating is the highest in the world, I think it's at 80% or something, yeah. when he sells Russia and we bash America and the approval rating of ours is low, well, our history, we have a bad history, we're this, we're that. Look at what Jamie Dimon says here. Go for it. If the other way around, America has the best hand ever dealt of any country on this planet today, ever. Okay, and you know, Americans don't fully appreciate what I'm about to say. We have peaceful, wonderful neighbors in Canada and Mexico. We've got the biggest military ba barriers ever built called the Atlantic and the Pacific. We have all the food, water, and energy we will ever need. Okay, we have the best military on the planet, and we will for as long as we have the best economy. And if you're a liberal, listen closely to me in that one, because okay? the Chinese would love to have our economy. We have the best universities on the planet. They're great ones elsewhere, but these are the best. We still educate uh, you know, most, of the, most of the kids who start businesses around the world. We have a rule of law, which is exceptional. If you don't believe me, and we talk about Britain, Brazil, Russia, India, Venezuela, Argentina, uh, China, India. Believe me, it's not quite there. We have a, a magnificent work ethic. We have innovation from the core of our bones. You can ask anyone in this room, what can you do to be more productive? Ask your assistants, factory floors, we do it. It's not just the Steve Jobs, it's this broad death. We're the widest and deepest financial markets the world's ever seen. Okay, and if you, I just made a list of these things, and maybe I missed something. Go. It's extraordinary. It's how extraordinary. Easy it is to sell and we have it today. America. Yes, we have Pause problems. This. How you know easy what? it is so to sell easy. America. By the way, do you know when this speech was from? No. Take a guess. Two I don't care ago. if it's 10 years ago, a month ago, or a day. That's ago. my point. Is, I don't care no, when it is. No, that's great. It's timely. I, I, it's timely. Yeah, beautiful. That's my point. This speech was in 2016. America, baby. Think about where we've come in the yeah. last eight years, yep. seven years since this speech. It's as, it's as relevant and as poignant as ever. And he's being called upon by what? Bill Ackman these days, left and right. Bro, you got to run. Now's your chance. Now your chance. You know, it's he's 67 years old, worth almost $2 billion. I vote for him. But by the way, forget about the fact that he's 67, worth $2 billion. You know, he's got a $900 million art collection and a secret building he's built. But have you seen this? 900? Thing? Pull, pull, pull up uh, Jamie Diamond's $900 million Does art collection. Have? Let me tell you more about this guy. Do you know he was an assistant, a personal assistant to Sandy Wow? Do you know at what company in 1982? American Express. That's where this guy got started wow. as an assistant to Sandy Wow. Mm -hmm. And more importantly today, do you know how much money every day circulates with Chase? $10 trillion a day in 170 countries in 120 different currencies. That's this guy. One of his famous quotes, he said, uh, if you don't bring up the problem to me, it's your problem. Wow. If you bring up the problem to me, it's our problem. Trust me, mm -hmm. you want to bring me the problem. Wow. Okay? So, I'm yeah. prefacing what yeah, he yeah. said. But this, but again, yes, the Epstein stuff, what happened in 2013 when they stopped doing business with Epstein and they said, look, we don't want you to be here. You, they canceled the account even though he was with them for 30 years. And they said, well, we never communicated with them. There was like 1,200 email exchanges with one of the guys, Staley, that was working there. There is that side of it. But the point here is we need more people in America to sell America. 100%. I don't mm -hmm. care if you're military. I don't care if you're a capitalist. I don't care if you're a politician. I don't care if you're in the media space. Sell America. We have such a great argument to keep selling America. I'll well, give you the final thoughts here before we wrap up. Well, this is going to be a very nerdy final thought, but I'm not sure if you're familiar with the work of Charles Murray. Uh, the bell curve gets a bad rap, but he talks about how America is one of the few countries where it's actually better to be born smart than it is to be born rich just because you have the idea of self-determination. It's one of the few mm -hmm. places where you can work hard and get what you are worth, which is not the case for the vast majority of countries out there, and it's something that we take for granted. That was how, basically how he ended his speech. Exactly. You know, he's bad. I know you got to run. Odds he actually runs and what party he would run. Give Less me than five percent. Here's his answer when they yes. ask him if he's a Republican or a Democrat. He said, My heart, in my heart, I'm a Democrat. In my brain, I'm a Republican. <laughs> he's always kind of by the way, that's kinda of like the script when you're the CEO of a yeah. big bank yeah. or Goldman yeah. Sachs. You have to say that. Yeah. But it's less than five percent. I think what is gonna happen is the sooner they get rid of Biden, the sooner people are gonna get in. It, does he have a shot? Jamie can speak. He can sell. He's charismatic. He's, he's, he's talked to everybody. He knows finance. He knows politics. He's been around. He's done the power plays. The guy's a genius. The guy, he, you know, he, he's got a philosophy that he follows called the fortress philosophy. And you know what his philosophy is? Have a ton of cash. He had a ton of cash. Mm. When they bought Wamu, he had a ton. It's a very good philosophy <laughs> to have. Yeah. So I think 5% chance, but it has a lot to do with what happens here soon. The sooner they fire Biden, the sooner he can get in. It all depends on how quickly they do that. Here's what I do want to do. 
If you guys enjoyed Lauren today, do me a favor. Please go to her YouTube channel below. If you can put the link there, go subscribe to her channel. You can see her content there. Uh, let's also put all the socials so they can get her as well. You can. This is just one time you had a chance to hear her out on our podcast. If you've not been introduced to her, she's a rock star. Uh, she, she puts out great content, and she's provocative. She, ch she challenges. She pushes the envelope, and she has her own voice. And it's great to have you on, and we appreciate you for coming out. This was fantastic. Uh, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future, in the next 18 months while this crazy election cycle is taking place. Yeah, I'd love to. And again, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been a good time. Fantastic. And we're back Thursday again. Who are we with on Thursday? Charlie Kirk from oh, Turning Point Charlie. USA. Oh, okay, right. good. Charlie Kirk is going to be here on this Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Fantastic. So, gang, we'll see you guys on Thursday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.